It's a cold, cloudy, wet day as the Wolverines come onto the football field. This is the 78th meeting between Minnesota and Michigan, the battle for the little brown jug. At the start of the day, the Wolverines led the Hoosiers of Indiana by a half game with Illinois and Michigan State a game and a half back. In Champaign today, with about two minutes to go in the fourth quarter, Indiana very much in the run for the Roses. They lead Illinois 20 to 15. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. They always say that defense wins the Big Ten, and Michigan has the best defensive team in the conference. They've allowed one touchdown or less in three of the last four games. And Dick Vermeil, the ringleader, is Mark Messner. He's trying to become only the second player in the history of this conference to win all Big Ten four years. Gary, Mark Messner is a shoe-in to do that. I really, in fact, I think he's a shoe-in as a consensus All-American. He's a fine football player, not the big grizzly guy, as you can see this at 244 pounds. Extremely good quickness. He's into the secondary, into the backfield all the time. Minus yardage plays. Fine player. Well, his assignment today is to stop Daryl Thompson of Minnesota, and that may take some doing. Last year, Daryl Thompson really drove Michigan crazy. Going to go back a week almost or a year almost to the day from the Metrodome. As from the two-yard line, Thompson takes the handoff, slants to the outside, hurdles the defender, goes 98 yards for the touchdown. That's the longest run in Big Ten history. And before it was over, he gained 201 yards against Michigan. And Bo Jim Beckler said, I don't want to see the run again. I've talked about the run, and he has made Daryl Thompson a marked man. Well, I think Daryl Thompson is very accustomed to being a marked man. He's the only running back in the history of the Big Ten. As a freshman and a sophomore, has run for over 1,000 yards. As a junior right Right now, he's well on his way to another 1,000-yard season. He's accustomed to that, but I think it's going to take more than a Darrell Thompson to upset Michigan today. Each guy is going to have to have the finest game they've played this year. Well, Michigan has won nine of the last ten against Minnesota. They're three victories away from the Rose Bowl. Back with the opening kickoff for Ann Arbor in just a moment. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life, and I had to start again. With just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away million Americans will gather to elect the next leader of the free world. The person who must keep our economy growing, who will affect our jobs, our taxes, and our freedom. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. One man has the experience to fill this office. ABC's College Football is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America. Today, Chevrolet. By Michelob, one taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. By Magnavox, smart products for smart people. Magnavox, smart, very smart. And by Burger King, where we do it like you do it. So, as we mentioned, it's cold, it's wet, it's dreary, but it's Big Ten football. Temperature at kickoff time, 50 degrees, and heavy rain expected. What's at stake in this game? Well, the Rose Bowl, but also the little brown jug. And with more on that, let's go to Becky Dixon. Gary, the story of the little brown jug goes all the way back to 1903. Michigan and Minnesota played to a heated tie up in the Twin Cities. When they returned home after the game, Michigan realized they'd left behind their water jug. They asked Minnesota to return it. The Gophers replied, you're going to have to come up and win it back. And that's how this very special tradition all got started. The winner of today's game will be able to keep possession of the little brown jug for the coming year. Right now, Michigan has possession, and there's nothing Bo Schembechler would hate worse than losing it. Gary? All right, Becky, stay warm and dry down there. You better get some hot toddy in that little brown jug because it's <laughs> going to be cold as this day wears on. Michigan won the toss. They deferred. So they'll be kicking off. Indiana will be receiving the kick from Mike Gillette. Indiana make it Minnesota as Mike Gillette will go back, and here's the guy to return it. Chris Gators. It was Indiana earlier leading 20 to 15 with less than two minutes to go as they'll try to keep the heat on this Michigan team. Gillette kicking off, and Gators will go back into the end zone, and he's not going to bring it out. So the Minnesota offense, which is about 500 yards behind last year's output, 
Schaffner will be the quarterback. We talked about Thompson. Watch Gould, outstanding fullback. Bruce with a 91-yard touchdown catch a week ago. And Gators, who elected not to bring that one up. Up front, the best guy is number 63, Brian Williams. They figure, not only Minnesota, but Michigan as well, that he's the best offensive guard in the Big Ten. So from the 20-yard line, Minnesota with Schaffner at the controls, a man who was heavily recruited by Michigan. Starting out on the wishbone, Gary, not the normal veer attack. Expect them to see the option a lot. They're going back to that, getting back to their personality of a year ago. The handoff going up to the 25 to the 26-yard line. Fred Foggy. Foggy was a cousin of Ricky from a year ago, carrying the football that time. Pickup of almost five yards, and Eric Anderson made the stop. Defensively, we talked about Mesner. White, a junior out of Dayton's played well. Osmond, very tough at that nose guard. Some changes at linebacker. Eric Anderson starting. Alex Marshall, J.J. Grander, they feel is one of the best in the conference. And we'll look at the defensive secondary in just a moment. Second down. Let's make it a long three, almost four yards to go. Schaffner giving off straight ahead this time. It's going to be Gould, the fullback. Octavius Gould, a transfer from the University of Florida. And he has a first down. Here is the secondary on play for this second consecutive start for Michigan. He's playing in place of the injured David Arnold. Welburn and Murray each have four interceptions. So Minnesota off and running very well. First down at the 31. Gators is split to the near side. High formation backfield this time. Thompson hadn't gotten the ball yet. Here he comes. Thompson to the 35, 40, and he's close to another first down with a first to the far side. Beta Murray over to make the stop, and you saw the acceleration of Daryl Thompson. Well, he has that great burst of speed. Not a great make-you-miss guy, but he can get through cracks, cracks quickly. Now, watch the blocking out at the point of attack. He gets a nice kick out. He finds that crack. Then, Gary, he has the ability to accelerate through that seam and make that first down. You know, Minnesota, for the last two years, has moved the ball on Michigan better than any other team Michigan has defensed. That concern, Bo, that was an 11-yard game that time to the 43-yard line. Good off straight ahead, and this time Gould goes no place at all. That was Mark Mesner, who's the all-time sack leader and tackle for loss leader at Michigan. Well, I think that Mesner's lined up right here to the field, takes an inside slant move, comes right down, gets that penetration. We talked about that quick. You see that move right there? He's into the backfield right now, and you need help to block this guy. You can't block him by yourself, Gary. He is so quick, Dick. He's not as big as a lot of guys, even though he's 244 pounds. But in a five-square pattern, there's nobody quicker off the football. Loss of a yard, second 11. Schaffner back to throw. Scrambling to the near side. Schaffner runs very well. He's up to the 45, to the 47, and down there. He'll be six yards short of the first down. Bobby Abrams over to make the stop. They talk about Schaffner having 4-4 four, four speed. Well, they know he runs, you know, 4-4-9, 4-5, and he has the kind of speed, but he really doesn't perceive himself yet as an option-type quarterback, and he's learning. He's coming on. Now, you can see he's demonstrating running ability here. He has that ability, and then they feel that once he realizes, hey, I am also a darn good runner, he'll be a better option quarterback. Third down, six now for the Gophers. Last year, they lost 30 to 22 years ago. They upset the then top ranked Michigan Wolverines. Give to Schaffner. Boy, did he pay for that one. Quarterback draw. Schaffner nailed at the 49 yard line. He's still going to be four yards short of the first down. Fourth down coming up. Eric Anderson, a freshman out of Glenview, Illinois. His brother is a freshman quarterback at Indiana. Fourth down now for the Gophers. Continuing to rain. They had the field covered. It rained most of yesterday. And you can really notice the difference where the field wasn't covered. That's in the end zone and sideline areas. As back to punt is Brent Herbel, a junior out of Grafton, North Dakota. Seventh in the Big Ten in punting. However, he is second in net yardage. Coming up on the fly is Colazar, who leads the Big Ten in punt return. He there catches the ball at the 26. Michigan will have it for the first time, only a 24-yard punt. You've seen Ford do this for years. But now there's a big new Chevy with enough power to not only haul tons of trucks up this mountain, but also tow away the entire mountain. The advanced full-size Chevy. 
No wonder, when it comes to pickups, America's having a change of heart. The heartbeat of America. That's the day Chevy truck. When it comes to making a serious decision, my brother Tom is a lot smarter than he appears to be. Like most thinking Americans, Tom is looking for a contemporary, innovative leader. A leader with quality he can believe in. A leader he can trust. Yeah. Now, he has looked at a lot of television, listened to claims from all sides. Yes. And after careful consideration, Tom has made the smart choice. And that choice is... Magnavox! The sign. The sign. Magnavox. Smart choice. Very smart. Two years ago, Minnesota's last trip to Ann Arbor, they were tied 17-17 with three seconds to go. Chip Lowmiller with a 31-yard field goal. He hits it. Minnesota wins a 20-17, knocking off number one ranked Michigan, and they took home the little brown jug. Michigan with the football for the first time after that 24-yard punt as Michael Taylor, who is the top rated quarterback in the Big Ten. We'll start things out. He'll have Bowles, who had a 153-yard day a week ago. Up front, the man to watch, John Vitale, considered by many the finest center in the country. From the 26th now, the Wolverines. Taylor, play action fake. Being chased. And he's just got to get rid of it, and Minnesota almost picked it off. That was a great play by Joel Brown on the far side. He almost stayed in bounds as Taylor trying to get rid of it didn't throw it far enough to the far side. You can see him springing at the bottom of your screen. Now the ball's going high middle to the right of your screen. <laughs> Boy, he looked in bounds to me. I know it. He it looked in bounds to me, coach. <laughs> well, anyway, it's going to bring up second down 10. Taylor has thrown only two interceptions. Is he hurt? Taylor's hurt. He's holding his arm down. He's holding his right arm. Looks like maybe he dinged his shoulder. What a major development that is. That means Demetrius Brown, who was a starter a year ago against Minnesota, would have to come in and play quarterback. It was Mike Sunbold who was chasing Taylor when Taylor got rid of the football, and evidently he landed awkwardly on his shoulder. Let's see if we can pick it up. 79, right in the, coming from the, yeah, right to the right of your screen right there. He unloaded on him, and he went down and hit that astroturf, and maybe just sort of stung his shoulder as he hit the astroturf. 79, Mike Sunbold. He's a good player, sophomore at a Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Let's he, look again. Take another look at it. There it is. Boom, he gives him a little love tap right there, and down he goes right on the point of the shoulder. Mm. So Demetrius Brown, who was a starter a year ago, now pressed into service. He's a junior out of Miami, Florida. Second down, 10. Callaway comes in motion. Brown gives off to the fullback. That is Jared Bunch. And Bunch maybe got two yards. It'll bring up third down and eight. You know, Demetrius Brown has played awfully well this year when they put him in. Last week, he led him to a couple touchdowns in the ball game. He's gone in and done a good job throwing the ball 16 times, completed 11. Last year, he had the interception trouble. Well, he threw seven interceptions against Michigan State, and they were last year injury, or I should say interception plague. They've got a plus 13 in the turnover department this year because Taylor has protected the ball so well. Throwing only two, as we mentioned. Here's a little shovel pass. Comes off now to Jared Bunch, the fullback, and he's not going to get the first down back. He got a yard, and that's all. It's fourth down. Looks like and we have hit. a penalty flag coming up. That was Eddie Miles, number 28, a junior also out of Miami of Florida, who was over there to make the stop for Minnesota. And Ron Winter, the referee, indicating it's a foul against Minnesota. Boy, is that costly, because they had him fourth down. And instead, now, they're stepping off the yardage. And it'll be a first down. It's a personal foul. Could not hear the mic. But it was a personal foul against the Gophers. Here's the little shuffle pass up inside. Bunch has it. Now he's got it tucked in his left arm. Here comes Eddie Miles, number nine, 28. He has him down. Here comes the late hit. That's just a little too much enthusiasm right now. You can sense that they're really fired up. They've got to control that if they're going to beat this football team. That was Ron Getz, the linebacker, their top linebacker, who was late on the scene. Here's a handoff to Bowles across the 50. Bowles to the 45. Very close to a Michigan first down. Lumpkin was the guy who made the stop on Bowles. Bowles over 1,000 yards on the year already. Defensively, Ockrey, Tripp, 
Huckleberg, Sunbull, the man we were talking about earlier up front. They've gotten much better. There's Getz. Stats is a true freshman. Stevens runs very well at that linebacking spot. They have a true freshman in the secondary starting. Sean Lumpkin. King getting his second start. McCree and Brown has been outstanding this year for Minnesota. 11-yard gain on that last play. First down for Michigan at the Minnesota 44. Callaway and McMurtry split out. Callaway number two goes in motion. Brown to Bowles. Bowles to about the 40-yard line. A pick up the four. It'll bring up second and six. Boy, have we got a shocker for you. We told you earlier Indiana was leading against Illinois. The final, Illinois pulling it out. 21-20. What a year John Makovic has had him for the finding Illini. That could very well put him in as the Big Ten Coach of the Year. He's done a great job there. Well, what that does, that eliminates Indiana's hopes of returning to the Rose Bowl for the first time since 1967. Bill Mallory had his contract extended five years this week. What a tough way to lose one. He led all the way until the very end. Second down now, six yards to go. Colazar goes in motion for the Wolverines. No score thus far. Give to Bowles. Bowles to the 35. Fumble. The ball is fumbled at the 35. It's still loose. Michigan's going to pick it up. Nobody could come up with it. Eventually, Demetrius Brown did. As you take a look, it's just what we call the sprint draw. The quarterback, Brown, is going to take the ball back deep. He gets a nice block by Bunch right at the point of attack. He chops down the defensive line, and he breaks in there. The ball's to the right corner of your screen. Hey, there's big step net number 75 at 325 pounds trying to get on it. Oh, all right. Demetrius ends up with it. We've got a measure now to see where that football ended up. Who's our number 74 for Michigan? The big offensive right guard came out limping. Already they've lost Taylor. Huzar shaken up. It was a first down after all that. So Bowles had made it to the 30, fumbled it backwards, but the recovery still produces a first down for Michigan. We understand that Michael Taylor will not return. So the injury to Taylor is severe enough that he will not see any more action. And Bo Schimbeckler is fortunate he has a veteran like Brown who can come in at quarterback. Well, he's been there. He's been in the heat. As you said, he started all but two games last year. So he's been there. And he's better now than he was last year. After that fumble, Michigan ended up with a six-yard gain and a first down to the 34. Give to Bunch. And Bunch to the 30-yard line. And here goes Taylor out. We had a chance to visit with Michael Taylor yesterday, and they were talking about what a student of the game he is. Well, we got in here Thursday, went up to the coach's office, and there he was with one of his offensive linemen in study and defensive tapes on Minnesota. And he was studying as if he were a coach and explaining to the offensive lineman what was happening. He was really into it. And what last night we saw him doing the same thing. Yeah, boy, what a... What a charming young guy, and the junior out of the Cincinnati area is through for the day. High school academic All-American as well. So Brown is ready. He's been waiting for this opportunity. He's been waiting as the number two guy, and now he's the guy that has to get it done. Second and six for the Wolverine. Bowles. Bowles to the 25, to the 20, on his feet to the 17. That's another first down for the Wolverines. James King and Joel Brown combine on the stop for the Golden Gophers. Mark Ramirez, number 62, the big offensive guard here, pulls that big body of his over here and gets the key block to break it inside. Now here he goes. Now here he comes. Now watch him get right up inside there, gets a block right there, walls him off. He bounces outside, gives him a little foot move there. First down, move the chains. You can't give Michigan the first down with a penalty. See what's happened? Santa Claus came early. That's right. Plus that opportunity to come up with a fumble. They didn't. There's movement now, and you were talking about Strepnik. Greg Strepnik, six foot eight. They say he weighs about 315 pounds. He's lost about 10 pounds. <laughs> the offensive line coach, Jerry Hanlon, has coached a lot of great offensive linemen here. You know, the Deardorfs and the likes and that kind of stuff. But he says this guy right now, he's just a young giant who someday could end up being one of the best. They're not picking up the referee's mic, but he's indicating illegal procedures you would expect. Strepanik is just a young giant. 
Oh, I know it. You know, I visited with him the other day, and I asked him if he was concerned about pass protection against Minnesota. He says, Coach, when every day you work against Mesner, you don't worry about the opponent. That hey, gets you ready, doesn't yeah. it? First and 15 after the penalty. This is the ninth play of this drive. Colazar goes in motion. Give to Bowles. Bowles inside the 15. He's to the 12. Right by Max Stevens. All right, Gary, you're the linebacker. You make this play. Huh? Does, it looks easy, doesn't it? Coming right at you right up there. Look at, look at the good foot movement right there. He pulls out of those tackles. Real good, short, choppy step running so he can always in control to make the right cut. Bowles, 44 yards on five carries. Bowles' team second of the Big Ten in rushing. Now has it second and five from the 12-yard line of Minnesota. No score. 7-18 to go in this first quarter. Brown gives off to Bunch, and Bunch pounds it inside the 10 to the 7, about a yard short of a first and goal. Mark Ramirez, who's in there now for the injured Huzar, leading the charge up front. Here's Chris Qualloway, a wide receiver, and I'll tell you, in watching these guys in preparation for this game, Gary, both you and I commented how well their wide receivers block. What did Joe say he calls his wide receivers? Wide blockers. Wide blockers. <laughs> They're going to measure to see if they got the first down. You know, I think the, the thing that's important to note right now in Demetrius Brown's performance so far in this series, when he was put down to the second unit, he never pouted. He worked harder. He kept, you know, great concentration. Tried to help Michael Taylor. I mean, enthusiastic the whole time about it. Now here he is back in charge. If he'd have pouted or shown a bad attitude, he may not even be here. Boy, it's a big difference, too, on this team. They're going to continue their march to Pasadena and be able to just continue on at that quarterback spot. And Brown is very capable of that. He's had some great games. Here he is. Very tough kid out of Miami. He was academically slow to the start of the year, missed some of fall practice, and lost the starting job. So it was a first and goal after the measurement at the six and a half. Bowles and Bunch in the backfield. Bowles inside the five. He'll make it to close to the three-yard line. Ross Huckleberg, who's been a very, very consistent player up front, made the stop. You know, as much as Bowl loves to run the football, it almost gives him an excuse. Well, I got to run a little bit more today because I have deep Demetrius, and he's only thrown the ball 16 times this year. I've got to be more conservative. What did he tell <laughs> us, though? His offense may be too complicated. Yeah, well, he's, he really believes that. He's, they're doing so much with the sophistication and line calls and blocking and audibles and all that. Check with me on the line of scrimmage. He thinks he's maybe making it too complicated. McMurtry split out. Second and goal now at the three-and-a-half-yard line of Minnesota. Bowles. Bowles fights to about the two. A gain of one hard-earned yard that time. Defensively, good reaction that time by Trent Tripp. Also, Mike Sunbull, that defensive line of Minnesota's gotten better every week. They have improved, but you know that uh, they're young, they're quick, they have good movement, and they play a variety of fronts, so they don't have to sit and hit the same guy all the time. Here's Bowles. Well, you see, Not too 213 bad. yards against Wake. He needs 602 yards to catch uh, Jamie Morris' single season record of 1,703 yards. He has 48 today, 7 for 48. Now Brown changing the play on a third and goal at the two-and-a-half-yard line. They go to the wishbone. Bowles, and he's about a yard short of the end zone. It's fourth down. Gary Isaacson was there. Okay, you're the head coach. You make the call. Here it is. Lead play. Guards pulling around. Kick out. Lead through. He's got up in there. Good penetration by the defense. Good pursuit inside out. They stop from getting in there. Do you kick the field goal? Yep. You do. You yep. make the decision. Well, of course, I, you wait to see what I he's waited doing. to see Gillette you come chicken. on the field. <laughs> no, it's too early in the game, Coach, to uh, not at least get something out of this drive, right? Sometimes Especially though, on a wet, rainy day. Sometimes, though, when you feel you're physically better, you, you can be a little more conservative and say, hey, I'll just take my three. I'll be back down here again. So Gillette with the number 19 on his back kicks a 19-yard field goal. And Gillette has his 10th field goal at 15 tries. And so Michigan takes a 3 to nothing lead. In the village of Upper Nyack, the firemen fight fires with ladders and hoses. And a Murata fax machine. It's used to receive floor plans and detailed drawings of buildings so they can plan how to attack the fire before they get to the fire. Murata fax machines. 
We're not a company. But we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop. To perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career. A career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Army. The Navy. The Air Force. The Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. 10,000 balloons. Jack. 88,000 safety pins. Jack. Two and a half tons of bagels. Jack. 22,000 runners. Okay, we're off. The New York City Marathon, live tomorrow on ABC Sports. A critical Big Ten game next week when Michigan takes on Illinois. As a result of these last-second dramatics by Jeff George for Illinois, they went in front 21-20 and went on to beat Indiana by one point in Champaign. Gary? Well, the significance of that, Dick, is that Illinois can still control their destiny to the Rose Bowl. They can do it, and when you have a guy that can throw the ball like George can, <laughs> he's something just a sophomore, Jeff George. That drive, 72 yards, 14 plays. They now officially record it as an 18-yard field goal rather than 19. So Gillette will kick off. 3-0, Michigan. Michigan play about their starting quarterback, Michael Taylor, hurt on the first snap. Gators is back now for the Gophers. And Gators a very fine kickoff and punt return man. He's third of the Big Ten in kickoff return. He's averaging 22.4 and has a 50-yarder to his credit already this year. But he's not going to take this one. Instead, it's going to be Sean Lumpkin. And Lumpkin runs into trouble. Brings it out to the 21-yard line. Let's go down now to Becky Dixon. Sitting behind me is offensive tackle Mike Huzar. I just talked to the Michigan doctors. They say he has sprained his right knee. They're not sure as yet just how severe it is right now. He has ice on the knee. They're going to examine it further and then make a decision on whether or not he will return. Well, he originally hurt that knee in 1986, but he had an ankle in 85. He's had some bad luck. He, I got to visit with him yesterday, and he said he was 100% and really raring to go. Well, he had to move to tackle last week because right. Doring was hurt. Now he's out of there. Ramirez, who's played a lot, has played in the guard for him. Schaffner rolling the near side. Throws, and that went oh. right through the hands of Gators. I don't know what happened there. She's big Brian Williams, number 63, that, that the fine offensive guard pulled out and got a chop down block out of the front of the quarterback. Nice throwing lead there to go ahead and throw the ball. Incomplete pass. Take a look at the big guard, number 63, at 305 pounds. Now watch him get this cut down block. Boom, puts him down on the ground there. Nice throwing lane created there. Ball went right through his hands. Now Gators has awfully good hands. He should make that catch. Well, he has 30 catches coming in. That was the first passing attempt for the Gophers. Second down, 10. Just short of the 25-yard line. Schaffner giving up. It's going to be Octavius Gould out of Brownsville, New Jersey, who they think is going to be something special. He transferred from Florida when he got enough playing time behind Emmett Smith, and he and Thompson really give them a one-two punch. Uh, and he's really more like a running back. He's a breakaway type guy. He's, you know, outstanding student, listed in who's who among high school students as a senior in high school. Really, I mean, what a gift to get a guy transferred to your school. Third down now, a yard to go for the Gophers. Gators come split to the near side, eye formation this time. Gould and Thompson in the backfield. Give to the first man, Gould and Gould fighting. Gould and all carrier. Needed to get just about to the 35. Let's see if he got it. Gould is a 219-pound sophomore. Thompson, his running mate, weighs 220. It is a first down for Minnesota. Here's good nose guard play right here. Watch him take on the block and then work inside out into the play. Here he goes, taking on that block, slanting the field, looking come up underneath, good penetration. See, that's broke it all up right there and allowed the linebackers to come in and make the pop. Michigan ranked number one in rushing defense, number one in scoring defense, number one in total defense. And here comes Thompson. Thompson to the 40. Boy, when he carries those knees high, he is something special. J.J. Grant, the leading tackler for the Wolverines, made the stop. He's now carried the ball two times for 16 yards as John Gutekunst sends in a play from the far side. Gutekunst struggling this year after last year taking his team to a 6-6 six and six record. 6-5 six and five this year looking for their first win in Big Ten play. Second down, five yards to go for the 40-yard line. Schaffner straight ahead handoff to Gould. 
Jewell stumbling forward to about the 42, be three yards short of the first down. You know, the offensive coordinator, Larry Beckish from Minnesota, told us the one thing we have to do to be successful today is to establish the inside running game for the fullback. If we can do that, then the pitch outs and the options and that kind of stuff go much better to Terrell Thompson. Well, what's happened to Thompson? He's really been a marked man all year long, not just today. With Ricky Foggy a year ago, you had to really be concerned about him, and it allowed Thompson to do some things. And Michigan's defense maybe had the most intense week of practice they've had all year. They were looking forward to playing this guy. Third and long two, Schaffner, dangerous pitch, gets it back to Thompson. He will not get the first down. Swarmed under that time. Mark Mesner was the first to get there, and they are fired up. They don't want this guy to get 100 yards on him, and he's been a marked man, as you said. Take a look at this now. The option play, quarterback going to make the fake. Schaffner's going to make the fake inside. See, they've established that fullback. Now, Messer's got good penetration right there. That was that was actually Beaker, number 91, who got the penetration. Then number 60, Mark Messer, comes in from the backside. But Mike Teeter, number 91, got the great penetration in there. Broke the whole play up. No timing, no rhythm left. Here's Herbal back and Colazar, who leads the Big Ten in punt returns. He had a 60-yarder last week. Waits. Not exceptionally good punt, and Colazar comes up and makes a dangerous grab at the 32. But he let one roll last week, so you could bet he was going to make that catch this week. That's the second 24-yard punt by Herbal. At UPS, we're changing the face of the international delivery business. Because now, UPS delivers to every country in Western Europe, the Pacific Rim, Down Under, and Canada. And because we're so efficient, we can deliver your international parcels and documents for fewer francs, yen, or drachmas than other companies charge. And let's face it, a drachma saved is a drachma earned. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. It's just like checkers. It's it's triple jump. It's boom, boom, boom. You make the right choices, you get to the it's prize. You. One of those prizes is Pontiac Grand Prix. I got a winner here. I don't believe it. <laughs> yes! Every card can win. Here are two of the millions of winners. Dolores Perez won $10,000 and Richard Johnson won a Pontiac Grand Prix. There are still millions of prizes to win, so hurry in and play triple jump checkers at Burger King. Fancy perfuming aftershave. It's got to be a quarterback's locker. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice blue aqua velva. There's something about today's aqua velva man. Look for aqua velva Christmas gift sets. This is not the time to learn that all antifreezes aren't the same. What's in your radiator? Come on, answer. A couple of updates from around the nation. Major Harris throws for three touchdowns and then leaves the game with a hip pointer. West Virginia, just under 10 minutes to go, is rolling. Also, Auburn looks to record their fourth straight shutout, leading big over Southern Miss. Back to you, Gary. Al, thank you. Michigan leading three to nothing. They have the football. Last time, they took it to the one-yard line, settled for a field goal. They start this one from their own 32. Demetrius Brown, in place of the injured Taylor, gets the ball. Goes to the 45 and felled it backwards. Boy, was he hit there. Great tackle that time by Lumpkin. There's also a flag on the play. Going to have a clipping call against Michigan. That would have been a first down run to the 45. Instead, it'll come back. But Michigan quite obviously showing they can run this football and run it effectively. And you wonder, with the weather like it is, and you can see it raining here, if it's not going to affect Minnesota more, they play indoors. They're not used to this kind of weather, even though they're from the state of Minnesota. Well, the one advantage if you play high school football in the state of Minnesota is you've played in a lot of bad weather, you know, especially in the, in the end, of your, end of your season. But it could affect Minnesota a little bit more than Michigan because of that indoor facility. What a great facility it is. And today, the weather has really been something. That was John Colazar who was guilty of clipping on the play, so it'll bring it back to the 29-yard line of Michigan. Brings up now. First down, and about 15 yards to go. Hand off. Bowles. Bowles out to the 30, and he's able to pick up a little bit of that back to the 30. They need to get to the 42 now to for a first down. Mike Sunvold was the guy that made the stop on the play. Bowles is kind of a glider. 
He has the good speed, deceptive speed. Doesn't look like he's running as fast as he is at times. Well, the other thing he does from what the coaches say, Jerry Hanlon told us this, that he carries the pads well. If he has a certain speed without the pads on, you put the pads on him, he doesn't slow down. There's a lot of guys like that, though, Dick, who run well on the track, but you put a uniform on him and something happens to him. Well, there's also the fear factor. You know, someone's going to hit you now. <laughs> well, that makes you run faster, doesn't it? <laughs> Second down now. 11 yards to go. Demetrius bound Brack, and wait a minute. Flags everywhere. Let's see if we have a delay of game coming up against the Wolverines. That's what it is, and you might expect that when you make a quarterback change. There's just a few things. He's saying, get the play in quicker. Now, I don't know if I'd talk to Bo that way or not. That's one way to take the heat off the quarterback right now is sort of point the finger. It's like the quarterback that throws the pass downfield, and it's not a good pass, and the receiver stands down there with his hands on his hip. You know, it just hit me with a ball. Yeah, right. Well, I'll tell you right now, I think I would be a little more tactful when I tell Bo to get the play in. You bet. You bet. Yeah, of course, you know, I don't know who's the backup. Yeah, all right. He's the quarterback now. Second down, 16 after the penalty. Callaway goes in motion. Wet, soggy day here in Ann Arbor. Back to throw Brown, the left-hander to the near side. Colazar to the 35, to the 40, to the 42. And that's very close, if not the first down. Lumpkin was over to make the stop once again. They think Lumpkin's going to be a big-time player in the future. And Colazar has been a big play performer all four years at Michigan. Caught that one. Which you have to remember, when you're throwing the ball to Colazar, you're throwing the ball to one of the best punt returners in the Big Ten. So you're throwing the ball to a guy that can make people miss. Now watch him roll around. Now he's a punt returner. He's getting up there, chance to break it. They're going to measure. We'll be back with the measurement. secret why more drivers come to State Farm and stay with State Farm. They like the personal agent service and the way we handle claims, just like my policyholders, the Bimas. And now, because Ralph and Nyla are over 50, they're saving important money with a State Farm discount. If you are 50 or over and you want great service and savings too, talk to a State Farm agent now. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This weather's not good for the old do, right? The hairdo? We played one quarter, Michigan, with a three to nothing lead. The measurement during the end of that first quarter indicated they had a first down, and this is the trophy. One of the most prestigious, one of the most memorable, one of the most historical, the little brown jug. Looks like my vinegar barrel. <laughs> You've had a few of those, I know. Yeah, noticed. you bet. The first down 10 for the Wolverines as we start the second quarter. That was Horde, the fullback. Advancing the ball to about the 45. John Gutekunst, his team trailing by three points as we begin the second quarter. His team, this Minnesota team, they actually, I think the anticipation may be a little bit too high coming into the year. They thought they were going to be much better than they, they are. They're inexperienced, they're young, and some of the guys playing are playing new positions. 
I kind of believe you'll see them improve just a little bit each year. The thing about the Big Ten is they are really strong in the underclassmen, the freshmen, the sophomores. Next year, this conference should be much tougher, and Minnesota's included in that. Second down, eight. Brown gives to Bowles. Bowles to the 50. Breaks it inside the 50. He's got a first down to the Minnesota 46-yard line. That was Joel Stats, the true freshman, number 55. Now, there's a story. Stats starting and caused John Leverance, their outstanding all-Big Ten linebacker, went down with a knee injury in the first game, and really it was the heart of their defense. Oh, yeah, and a guy that had made 192 tackles coming into the season, now he's not playing for you. A guy that would have been a unanimous all-Big Ten player, and you don't lose the physical contribution, you lose that leadership. And Stats is a guy they wanted a red shirt. Instead, he's had to start at that middle linebacker spot. First down at the 46 and a half of Minnesota. Bowles and Horde in the backfield. Continuing to rain and it's getting colder. Demetrius Brown to Bowles. Bowles a busy guy. Close to the 40. There's a late flag thrown from the headlinesman. Joel Brown has been a vicious tackler out of Peyton, Colorado. A walk-on who has had three fumble recoveries and three interceptions was on that stop, but it's going to be holding against Michigan. But you, we were talking about Minnesota. You know, he's a senior, but Joel Brown wasn't a strong safety. See, he's been playing linebacker, I believe, and moved back into that secondary position. They did use Brown a linebacking spot, especially on passing nickel situations. Downs, nickel situations. Holding. Offense. First down. So that run by Bowles, it got them to the 40 of Minnesota, is negated, and they're going to bring the ball back into the Michigan end of the field. Boy, I tell you, it is some type of weather day here today. It rained all day yesterday. It's rained throughout the Midwest. They're staying on the ground thus far. Bo has a smile on his face with 15 runs and four passes. <laughs> All right, the penalty now makes it first and 20 for the Wolverines from the 44 of Michigan. 3-0, the Wolverines with an 18-yard field goal thus far. Pitch comes to Bowles. Bowles has a block. Up to the 45, 50, 45, all the way back to the 40 where he was before the penalty. Still three yards short of the first down. Ron gets and flying over the leading tackler for the Gophers to make the stop. Derek Walker, number 89, the fine tight end. You see him right to the left center of your screen. Now watch him reach out. He gets a great hook block right there. Turns him all the way back. Gets a kick down block right there from Horde. That gives him the room to get really accelerated and get going. Now he uses that track speed. But a fine block by Derek Walker. Already 87 yards for Bulls. Talking about blockers. What about Jeff Brown? You think he may be the best blocking tight end in the Big Ten. We see him on the sideline. Second down now, three yards to go. Straight ahead this time is Horde. Horde to the 35, and that'll be a Michigan first down. See, Michigan is so big. When you look at 277 pounds at the quick tackle, 280 at the quick guard, 275 at center, 287 at right guard, 322. It really, I mean, it takes a man to take you on defensively. I'm going to tell you, I watched practice Thursday, and I was standing in the end zone, and I watched that offensive line come up, get into the three-point stance, and they are so huge. They're big from the side and from up where we are. If you stand and look head on, that is intimidating. They're bigger than my Philadelphia Eagle offensive line was. First down now at the 35-yard line for Michigan. 12-25 to go in the second quarter. Michigan with a 3 to nothing lead. I'm sure aware that Illinois has knocked off Indiana. Oh, good move there. Yes, it was. And there's going to be a loss on the play. Ford had no place to go. Good penetration. Mike Sunfold really beat the man underneath. He beat Huzar un underneath, got into the backfield, broke the rhythm of the play. Good job by Mike Sunfold. Here he is at the right bottom of your screen. Now you can see him right there. He's going to slant underneath. There he goes. See him go right underneath Mike Huzar. Stunts up underneath. He's into the backfield. Breaks the running course right there. Then gets help from the rest of the defense. Ron gets number 37. Good job by Mike Sunfold. Sunfold, a sophomore. Ocri, a sophomore. Both of them on those defensive flanks for Minnesota, which bodes well for the future. Colazar and Callaway are split out, and right now we're going to have a penalty flag against Michigan. How many penalties have we had already there? I don't know, but this illegal procedure will tack on a five-yarder. They've had five penalties now, Dick, for 40 yards. And, and Michigan came in the fourth least penalized team in football. I think, when you 10, get, I think when you have bad weather, though, it hurts your concentration. I think you're more sus suspect. 
to having some mechanical problems. And already Michigan certainly can attest to that. Well, I promise you, Bo will not let, uh, allow that to be used as an excuse. Look at Michigan State. That'd be their fourth win in a row. They are rolling now, aren't they? And Iowa winning, and Wisconsin looks like they're still going to be winless. Second down now, 17 after the penalty. Brown setting up to throw. He's got a block from Horde. Dumps it on the screen to Bowles. He can't hang on. Sunbold was right there. They had that one sniffed out all the way. Minnesota deployed themselves very well. Play action pass screen. He got up inside, then slipped out in the screen as he looked the ball coming in his direction. So was big number 79, Mike Sunbold. And he made the choice, <laughs> dropped the ball. Wisely. Third and 17 now for Michigan. Bowles will come out of the football game. Sunbold out of Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. And he has been a guy that they think is going to be a heck of a player. He's going to be something special for this Minnesota club. His goal is to play in the National Football League, and he's setting the tempo today. Ford is the only running back as they have three wideouts on this play. Callaway goes in motion. Third and 17, Brown. Brown and Kolazar trying to make the catch at the 25. That'll bring up a fourth down. Kolazar, in his career, has averaged 23.7 per catch. He's been a big play man. You can see him coming back inside on the zone coverage. Charlie McCree, number three, had him deep. Underneath, Joe Brown, number nine. He was right where he wanted to be, but the ball was not there. Right in that heart of that little zone. So Gillette, who does the punting as well as the field goal kicking, will go back for Michigan. Remember, he ran one for a touchdown out of a fake punt against uh, Indiana a couple weeks ago, didn't he? The snap to him. He hits it very high, an awkward looking punt. And it's not going to be a good punt. It takes a generous bounce for Minnesota. And they're going to have it at the 30. Gillette is the guy that downed it. Gillette punted it, and he downed it. You don't see that very often. <laughs> I've seen it a couple times. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. Get super safe. The punt a moment ago registers eight yards, and Gillette downs his own punt. That's hard to do. <laughs> punt the ball and go get it. I have seen that happen in the National Football League, though, so it's not unique. It just doesn't happen very often. Plus, Gary, there's a pretty good wind up there yeah, blowing there around. Is. And it's wet. Yeah, here he goes. I tell you, it's tough to be a good punter and a good place kicker at the same time. Well, we'll talk more about that. We can't think of very many teams that do that. So Minnesota's good field position, and it's Daryl Thompson across the 35 to the 38-yard line. J.J. Grant made the stop. This guy, Thompson, is one of my favorite people. I don't know if you've been around him that much. I've been at certain banquets with him. Just a delightful guy, tremendous kid, and obviously an outstanding football player. Those are the numbers he had a year ago, almost 10 yards per carry. Yeah, and he had 15 100-yard career rushing games already, two over 200 yards. Not bad for going into the middle of your junior Boy, year. I tell you, did Bo talk about him this week? Second down, seven. On the option, Schaffner now throwing. Far side and incomplete. Todd played of Michigan closest to the ball. Gators was the intended receiver, but just had no chance on that one making a connection. Third down coming up. Very good play action fake. Did a nice job. He didn't, you know, he made the good right fake inside, came up, set up with good poise, just didn't throw the ball real well, though I think the pattern was defense by Todd Blake. Schaffner was here when Minnesota upset this Michigan team. They ranked number one. He was sitting in the press box, being recruited by Michigan. Liked what he saw from the upset standpoint and ended up being a golden gopher. Third down, seven now for Minnesota. Schaffner play action. Protection is there. Gators. It's intercepted. It's picked off. Trip Welburn. He's to the 30. 25, and he's out of bounds. Fifth interception of the year for Welburn. pass, faking inside to freeze the linebackers, makes the fake up inside to Daryl Thompson, they have to acknowledge that, crossing pattern, now he lays it up, to, it's batted up in the air, and Sullivan Anthony Wellborn comes up with what you said, Gary, his fifth interception on the year. Here he is again, now you see the crossing pattern to the right side of your screen, Gators number two crossing over there, there the ball goes up high, you know, earlier in the game he dropped one, he's having a bad day, he's got to make that catch because that counts against the quarterback as an interception, that's playing volleyball with the ball there. 18 yard return, sets it up at the 24 of Minnesota. Albert with five interceptions on the air. Give to Bowl. 
with Bowles across the 20. Bowles to the 17-yard line. Pick up a seventh. Gary Bowles made the stop. I think Minnesota's got to do some stunning in that defensive line. They cannot line up and take those guys on visit. They've got to slant and stunt, take some chances to get some penetration. But more importantly, they can't afford to make mistakes. No. So you come in here against a well-coached Michigan team on the road, those mistakes just amplify. They kill you. Second down, let's make it four yards to go. McMurtry and Colazar split to the top of the field. Demetrius Brown, the quarterback, replacing Taylor, who injured his shoulder. Give to Bowles. Bowles, 15. And Bowles has a first down at the 12-yard line for the Wolverines. Skeeter Ockrey was the man who tripped him up, a sophomore out of Aubrey, Texas, who leads him in sacks and tackles for loss. First down, Michigan. Looks like maybe the rain has subsided a little bit. Maybe that's wishful thinking. Minnesota 12. So from the 12-yard line, already Bowles has 100 yards in this game. Well, he's gonna, he needs a lot of yards if he's going to catch Jamie Morris for the season record of 1,703 yards. Callaway goes in motion, 9-11 to go in the second quarter. This time it's going to be Bunch. Bunch inside the 10. He's to the 8-yard line. Bunch, they, when he carries a ball, he's so punishing, they talk about the players putting bunch protectors on because <laughs> he just knocks people backwards. Big, strong sophomore. He's actually a better blocker than their other fullbacks as well, but you can see just running the, what they call the belly play and cuts back in there. Good power, good pursuit by Minnesota there. Stops him right there before he can break clean. Line of scrimmage now will be at about the eight and a half yard line. Jeff Brown comes out. Derek Walker checks in a tight end. They need six yards for a first and goal. Callaway will go in motion again. Brown giving off to Bowles. Bowles got maybe a yard, and that's all. And it's going to bring up a third down. Stats and gets combined on the stop. There are stats. Very good against the run, but his inexperience is hurting from time to time against Spe the pass. Especially in pass defense. We have a man shaken up. That is Ockrey. We just talked about what a fine player he is, and the Texan is down right now. We'll be back to check his status. It'll be third and five for Michigan when we return. Listen to the heart. Chevy Beretta Sport Coupe, designed to help you look better, engineered to help you drive better, and priced to let you live better. IndyCar champion Danny Sullivan joins Hart's Best for their final event of the year. It's the Nissan Indy Challenge, tomorrow on ABC Sports. Gary Bender, Dick Vermeil, and Becky Dixon as Ockrey now comes off of the field. And in watching a replay while we're away, you can understand why Ockrey got hurt. Watch it. Big offensive lineman, Ding Dingman, Ding Dingman at 6'3", 280 pounds, pulling around right there, and boom, gets the knockdown block. <laughs> Boy, he made helmet to helmet contact. Yes, didn't he? he did. Third and five now as we pick it up again. They can pick up a first and goal at the two and a half yard line. Three to nothing, Michigan. Eight ten to go, second quarter. Bunch and Bowles in the backfield behind Brown. Two wideouts, top of the field. Brown looking that way. He's got a quarterback draw. Brown is not going to go anywhere. Fooled nobody. It was a broken play. That was a broken play, a mistake in execution of the play. So it's a fourth down, so twice now, Minnesota's held. They stopped him at the one. Now they stop him inside the 10 for the second time, and they'll have to kick a field goal. As you take a look at this now, you'll watch the quarterback in the center of your screen, Demetrius Brown, drop back. He's going back in there. See, he's got a foul up there somewhere. That's a broken play all the way. 
That was Ron Getz who came up then and gobbled him up. And this is going to be a 25-yard field goal attempt. Ken Solomon to hold, Gillette to kick it. The ball is on the way, and the kick makes it six to nothing in favor of Michigan. Six nothing with 7.27 to go in this first half. But twice, Minnesota's denied them the touchdown. GM makes the dream. GMAC makes the dream yours. With either financing or smart lease, custom tailored to fit your budget. Right at your GM dealers. The dreams of America. GMAC. If you think you might need some new hand tools, think about this. Sears Craftsman hand tools are built so tough, we guarantee them forever. And we mean forever. With the designed in sound of a Delco Electronics music system, now the best seat in the house is in your GM car or truck. Delco Electronics, it's who we are. The number two team in the nation, USC, meets Pac-10 rival Arizona State for a Big Ten matchup as Michigan State tackles Indiana next week on ABC's College Football. There is Ocri, who was shaken up after that collision with Dingman and checking to see if that shoulder's okay. Well, you know, he missed all of spring practice in 1987 with a knee injury. Now it being a shoulder injury, it looks like he's trying to talk to trainer and, hey, I'm okay, let me back in there. So, Gillette, there's a difference in this football game with two field goals will be kicking off. There's that last drive. It was all set up on the interception by Trip Welburn. Minnesota did a good job of renting the six points when you turn the ball over down there like that to a big physical team like Michigan. Gillette now the 11 field goals, the all-time kick-scoring leader at Michigan. This will be Chris Gators, and Gators will bring it up to 25 to the 27-yard line, and that's where Minnesota will have it. And it's fumbled, and Michigan's got it. 45, that's Brian Townsend, a freshman out of Cincinnati. We have a man shaken up for Minnesota. And that's Gators, the guy who returned the kickoff. Boy, that was a late development. It looked like the play had completely come to a close. And all of a sudden, this guy, 45 Townsend, comes up with a second turnover. All right, he's right in the middle of your screen now. Gators number two's got the ball tucked away nicely here. Ooh, there's some hits right there. You can't see the ball at all, Gary. But obviously, the officials ruled he fumbled before he hit the turf. Looked like Lance Dotton, who was a high school teammate of Schaffner, was the guy yes. that made the tackle. There he is. There's Dotton. the ball on the ground. Yep, but Dotton, 22, you saw him. He's a high school teammate. Game over, knocked him down. As an end result, the second turnover. Welburn with an interception. Now Townsend with the fumble recovery. And again, Dick, you just can't turn the ball over when you're playing at Michigan Self, Stadium. Self-destruction. <laughs> Self-destruction, absolutely. Gators still down. We'll be back. 6-0 Michigan. Can I help you? Yes, I'm looking for a special wine. What's the occasion? Well, I have this blind date. Let me show you something I like. Gallo Blush Chablis. It's just waiting to be discovered. Hi, I'm Jerry's friend, and you're the wine lady. You're Jerry's friend? Yeah. Come on in. So did I get the right wine? Perfect. Gallo Blush Chablis. A most unexpected discovery. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Listen to the heartbeat Chevrolet Corsica, the sports sedan that knows you have more important things to spend your money on, like your family. Ooh, the heartbeat of America. Chevrolet. Chevrolet. Bernie Kosar is back. Cleveland star quarterback leads the Browns in a key battle against division rival Houston on ABC's Monday Night Football. All right, just follow Dotton right here as he moves in to make the play. On Gators, Tim Williams, number 85, doing a good job of forcing him out to him right there. They both make contact. The ball bounces out underneath. See, 
Gary, the elbow got out away from the body. 90% of the fumbles occur when your elbow, the, the arm in which you're carrying the ball, that elbow gets out away, it drops out underneath, fumble. There is Dot. Well, Gators has been involved in both turnovers. Yes, One he has. One of deflected the ball in the air, and now after the fumble recovery, Michigan with a six to nothing lead. They have the ball to 26 of Minnesota. Bowles and Horde in the backfield. Brown back to throw. Broken up and who's got it? Nobody, I guess. Or did they come up with it? It's incomplete. <laughs> Uckelberg looked like he had a hand on it. The big six foot five senior as Brown trying to hit the man over the middle and that ball just never got there. Play action pass. Now you can see he's faking the run right here. It gets back. Now left-handed Gary, he put his passing arm on the wrong side of his body. See that? <laughs> <laughs> that was Uckelberg number 90. He hit it there. He bats it up, and Gardner got the interception. That one almost went by me. Second down 10 on the wrong side. I resent that. I'm left-handed. I know you are. That's Second down 10. Here is Bowles Ooh. to the 20. Look at the leg drive by Bowles. He makes it to the 17, and Joel Stats eventually caught up with him. Great blocking at the point of attack by the backside pulling lineman in that case. This guy is headed for a big, big day. Bowles is already over 100 yards on the day. Here's big Deanman pulling around right in here and getting to the point of attack. Again, those big guys, they get good blocks at the point of attack. Then here he comes. Now he goes up in the hole, boom, gets the linebacker there, gets him right up underneath the chin, gives him that running lane. See, and, and Getz is not the biggest guy. You know, he came there as a fullback, number 37, the fine linebacker, and the leading tackler, but it's tough to take on those big tack, big guards. Third and a yard to go. Bowles with 112 yards already. We have six and a half to go in the first half. This time, straight ahead comes Horde, and Horde will be shot backwards. Horde out of the New Orleans area, pushed backwards by Ron Getz. It will be a Michigan first down. Now, Horde's the fullback that couldn't play last week because he decided to cut two classes. And when you cut two classes and, and Coach Schembechler finds out about it, there he is right in the middle, left middle of your screen, just hand off directly inside. Coach Schembechler found out that he cut two classes. He didn't even make the trip. You know what his mistake was? That's the it. teacher was a very good, good friend, friend of Bose. You, you know, they say this guy has got a lot of a personality. In fact, they call him the mouth of the South. <laughs> they say he's a con guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a great personality. First down, Bowles again. Bowles to the 10 and just about there. And again, it's Ron Getz. Getz is playing a strong game. Getz, a junior, his freshman year, lettered at fullback for the Gophers. Very active. They think when they get Leverance back and Getz and Stevens, their linebacking core next year will be something special for the Gophers. But what Getz did that time is he went up and took on Dingman, the big offensive guard, that last time when he got whipped, he went up and met him at the, at the hole and broke it up. It very good adjustment by him. He wasn't going to sit there any longer and take on that big guy. Second down, seven now for the nine-yard line. Six-nothing, the Wolverines on two field goals. Give to Bowles. Bowles gobbled up, got a yard, and I'll tell you, this Minnesota team is tough inside the 10, aren't they? Well, they have good movement, too. They're getting, you know, you see one guy get blocked and all of a sudden flashing from the backside of the defense. Here comes another guy in a bad mood. He wants to make the play. Bad mood's a good way to put it. Stats, Huckleberg combining on it. Gutekunst knows that with two turnovers, they could be in a lot worse shape than they are. They trail six to nothing. Trying again to make this Michigan team settle for a field goal as it's third down six. Gillette's already kicked two. They don't get it here, they'll call on him again. Split backs this time. In motion comes Horde to the near side. Brown back, pressure coming. Broken up beautifully in the end zone. That was a fine play by Sean Lumpkin, the true freshman against Derek Walker, the tight end. You're going to take a look at the tight end right there as he comes off to the outside, trying to, with that motion man, trying to widen the defense. Oh, good defense by Sean Lumpkin. This is on tape. Gutekunst watching that last play and again realizing they've stopped Michigan three times inside the 10. Gillette will attempt his third field goal of the game, and this is another 25-yarder. He hit one earlier from there. The kick by Gillette is on the way, and it's now a 9 to nothing game. But you got to give this Minnesota defense a heck of a lot of credit. You bet. The defensive coaching staff dipped middle. The, inside, the coaches and inside linebackers and coordinates the defense. Bob Mathis and the defensive line coach, Bill Miller. Those guys are doing a real good job. 9 to nothing in favor of Michigan. 
We're not a company. But outstanding people come to us every day. People who want to make a contribution to a team and do work that really counts. People eager to see new places, do the unusual, and find the unusual. People who become your friends for life. People just like you. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Navy. The Air Force. The Marines. The Army. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Folks in these parts think Tom Lawton is the best thing to ever turn a wrench. But back east, they'll put their money down on the guys at McClellan's. It seems in every town there's always one place that does a little bit better job fixing your car. And it seems the things they all have in common are great mechanics, great service, and Napa parts. Look for the sign of quality car repair. Napa. Tuesday, the 88 vote, led by Peter Jennings, the winning personality this year. Jennings and Brinkley, can you imagine election night without them? John Gutekunst and Minnesota trailing nine to nothing, but three times Michigan has not been able to get it into the end zone, and here was a reaction again by Gutekunst. As you were mentioning, what's that mean in German? His name, Gutekunst, in German means good spirit. You can see he has that good spirit. Well, I tell you, they're, they're showing you something on defense. They didn't get their offense going. They'll be in this football game. They trail nine to nothing, but two big turnovers have set up two field goals. And earlier, Gillette kicked one after they stopped him at the one-yard line after a 72-yard drive. And they had that 72-yard drive stopped, and there was a personal foul, 15-yard penalty for piling on first down. Boggy will return this kickoff if it gets to him. It's not going to be picked up by him instead. It's going to be Jason Bruce, and Bruce brings it out to the 35-yard line. Let's go down now to Becky Dixon. Gary, you know the wet weather here in Ann Arbor today is not too big a concern for the Michigan Wolverines. Well, the field is a little wet and slippery, but there's not a problem with a wet football. That's because the Wolverines use a process called shake and bake. You just take the wet football, shake it off, put it into this bag, shake and bake. It's filled with a crystal-like substance called dry ball, and the Wolverines come out with a dry football. All right, I wouldn't mind having some of that in the booth up here. What I, what I want to know is, do they send that over to the Minnesota uh, Soda Cider? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. Well, Minnesota on the first snap of this series. Running straight ahead with the football is Thompson. Trip Welburn made the stop. California, USC later. Boy, I tell you, the shocker was Illinois coming from behind to defeat Indiana in Champaign after the Hoosiers had led all the way. What a game that was, and what a victory for Illinois, and what a disappointment for Indiana. Eliminated from Rose Bowl hopes. Second down, nine. Schaffner on a play action. Over the middle. Complete to Thompson. And Thompson barrels out to the 44, very close to the first down. You know, Thompson, they don't throw that much to him. He's only caught nine passes this well, year. And they say he really doesn't have good soft hands, but he's carrying the ball so much as a runner he doesn't get much time to be a receiver. They think it's just a case of working a little harder at it, and they want him to do that. And let's see if he got the first down. They're going to bring the sticks in. You know, his idol, as he was growing up watching NFL football players play, he really liked and respected very much the way Earl Campbell of Houston used to run the football. Big, strong guy, you know, barrel right over the top of you. First down, Minnesota. So that's a beginning point for this Gopher team. Well, Thompson has done it all out of Rochester, Minnesota. His mother was a three-sports star at Alcorn State. They called her Dr. Hook. She had <laughs> such a great hook in her basketball repertoire. So Schaffner now has a first down and the line of scrimmage just across the Minnesota 44. Nine nothing, the Wolverines, three and a half minutes to go in a rainy, wet day here in Ann Arbor. Give to Thompson. Thompson bends it across the grain, finds some running room up to the 47 before Eric Anderson was there to make the stop. Let's look at what Thompson has done. He's a little behind last year's pace. But look at the game against Miami of Ohio, Northern Illinois, and Northwestern. He's very close to two others, 98, 97 yards, having a century day. He has 25 carries, 25 yards on six carries today. The line of scrimmage at the 47, second and eight. Thompson. This time, split out. Schaffner back, a lot of time, and incomplete. 
That was Gould, the fullback, the intended receiver, and Anderson made instantaneous contact, and there was no place to go. Great reaction by Eric Anderson. He saw it coming all the way. Now, you're going to follow the back in the backfield to the right of your screen. He's going to get out of there late. He's checking down, letting the rush get up there. Now he just drops it off to him. Eric Anderson, sitting back there, was watching him all the way, and then went up and took him right on. Eric Anderson, number 37, making a fine play. You notice who was putting the heat on? Messner. I would have never guessed. No, never, would you? Messner was coming from that backside, and Schaffner saw it. Third down and eight now for Minnesota. Play action again. Schaffner with time over the middle. The pass is complete. Fighting for the first down, and I don't believe he got it. it was Jason Bruce. Bruce had a 91-yard touchdown catch last week. He's going to be just short of the first down. It's fourth down, a yard to go. Or less than a yard. Nobody sent in yet to kick the field goal. They're going after it. Or I should say punt. As on the far side, they're still debating. They're going to run out of time if they don't. Yep, they sure are. And here they come. They're going to continue this one. And now Minnesota's going to have to call a timeout. The indecision cost them too much time. So Minnesota will have some additional time. 2.14 to go on the first half. 9 nothing, Michigan. Delta Airlines flight attendant Irene Lockwoody loves to fly. Are you still here? My son was supposed to meet me. So I'll wait with you. That kid is always late. What she loves most are the people she meets. He must have got caught in the rain. He was even born late. Delta! <laughs> Irene is what Delta's all about. Irene. Yes? Are you married? Yep. Two kids. Late again, Joey. We love to fly and it shows. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. This Christmas, I gave the grandkids Radio Shack radio-controlled cars. Bobby's Golden Arrow has racing suspension and speed to burn up the track. Kim's Turbo Wing Buggy has big tires and a crash-absorbing front bumper. And little Teddy revs up his turbo Lamborghini. Grandpa, there's dirt on my wheels. Mine, Mine too. Uh, old Santa must have taken them out for a little test drive. Remote radio-controlled toys from $9.95 to $119.95, only at Radio Shack. ABC's College Football, brought to you by Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. And the heartbeat of America, today, Chevrolet. As you can see, it continues to rain. It continues to get cooler as this game wears on. And Minnesota's going to go for it on fourth down. And why not go for it? Why not? You, you, you come here to win. You know you're not quite as good as Michigan. You have to take some chances to beat them. I think this is a good decision. From the wishbone. Straight ahead, diving. And that was Gould, the fullback. I don't know. He made it. Michigan thinks he didn't. Well, I'm just watching the official spot it right there, and he's on the plus side of the 45-yard line, and they only had to get to it. Well, Bo's unhappy. It is a first down for Minnesota. Just a direct handoff to the fullback. Now, watch him. He gets up in the air. The linebackers get up underneath and do a pretty good job. And Eric Anderson, number 37. But he had enough to get the first. Look at Gutekinds. He says, I just made a tough decision. Good spirit. <laughs> All right. Well, they're down 9 to nothing, And this is their best offensive output of the game. Two back-to-back -back first down. Sets it up with the Michigan 45. Schaffner, little shovel pass forward. This is Gould, the fullback. He breaks across the 25 to the 20 and out of bounds. You can see Gould's speed as he got on the open field and Minnesota's fired up. David Key over to make the stop. 27-yard run by Gould. Taking a look at this from the end zone. Now see the fake inside. Gould setting to the right side of the screen. Now he wheels back down, whirls to his left. He gets a block right out here by Williams to the left. Actually didn't get a block, just brushed him off. Here he is. Good game. Good execution of the shuffle pass. That, of course, will go as a pass. 27-yard gain to the 19-yard line. And Minnesota now starting to put it together. Give to Thompson. No place to go. Good reaction. Anderson. Messner there. Look at Anderson. Is he fired up? He Freshman likes red shirt. Eric, Eric Anderson's dad and grandfather both played professional football, so it looks like he's going to follow him. And as we mentioned, his brother, a freshman in Indiana, a quarterback prospect. Good genes in that family. That's right. We met him there. That's we? right. He was walking out, talked to him. Yeah. So no gain on that play. They actually lost about a yard. Second down, 11. You see the time remaining in the first half. 117. 9-0, Michigan. 
Schaffner to Gould. Gould bobbles the block to the 15-yard line. Gain of four. Messner again on the stop. Boy, this Gould is, we've heard a lot about Thompson, but Gould is a very fine football player. He was second team freshman All-American at the University of Florida before he transferred. That puts him in pretty good company. But on that running play, Mark Mesner, number 60, he was yelling to his defense, pointing to where they were going to run. He is reading the adjusted line splits. There that he Minnesota is. is making in their line. The Lombardi Outland Trophy candidate, third down six. They have two timeouts remaining. 37 seconds when they snap the ball. Schaffner near side. The catch is made. It's made on the near side by Jason Bruce. And I don't know if they got the first down or not. They're it's looking close. to the far side. It's very close. The clock stopped with 32 seconds. Are they going to bring the sticks in or not? And now they're saying a first down. It was enough for the first down. Line of scrimmage, the eight. Now time really crucial. They have two timeouts remaining. 30 seconds. The clock put back into motion. First and goal from the eight. You're almost forced to throw the football. Schaffner. Handoff. Thompson. Thompson. Inside the five to the four. 16 seconds. They're going to have to use the timeout. Better get it called. Yep, they did. So Minnesota now with one timeout remaining. Their field goal kicking department. They have Brent Bergman who does their kicking, replacing Chip Lowmiller of a year ago. When in doubt, when in trouble, give it to the best football player you have on your team. And here he is carrying the ball on the eye draw play up inside. Some pretty good footwork on that play. J.J. Grant and Anderson again on the stop for Michigan. Now Michigan's entire defense has come to the near sideline. There's the time left. 14 seconds. Michigan with three field goals leading nine to nothing. Gary, when you have a football player like Daryl Thompson in the backfield, it really simplifies a lot of your play calling situations for you because it's defined. You don't think about offensive play. You think about who you give the ball to. You know what I mean? And that just eliminates any decision. Hey, he's our best player. This is really a tough time right now. We've got to get a Get it in there. Let's give it to our best player. Well, now you figure, though, Dick, it'd be awfully hard to stay on the ground. You have one timeout remaining. You have 14 seconds. Schaffner discussing that with Gutekunst now. Well, I thought they were going to throw last time because you're probably going to end up with one more attempt if you throw than you do if you run. See, that last running play took about eight seconds. Didn't there? Oh, it took more than that. Well, what happened was they started it up after they indicated the first down, yes. and they lost some valuable time yeah, by the time them. they got the ball snapped. About four seconds. So here we go. Second and goal from the four. 14 seconds left in the first half. Minnesota with one timeout remaining. Schaffner wants to throw. Scrambles out of the pocket. Stays on his feet. He's belted. The ball is loose. And who's got it? Made a hurry. Made a heck of a hit on him. It's Michigan's football. Third turnover in the game by Minnesota. Mark Schaffner, the quarterback position, wanting to throw over here a slant pattern to the left side of your screen. Defense takes it away. He scrambles up outside now. Here he comes. Good pressure by the defensive rush. Now, Veda Murray, number 37, or 27, right there. Good pop on him right there. Knocked the football out. <laughs> That's a tough break and a great play on the defense, but a tough break for Minnesota. And it's anybody's guess who came up with a fumble. Now, Schaffner, he wanted to hit Gators on a quick slant. Yes, he did. And Gators was not there. He not pulled it down, and all of a sudden, he was just absolutely in a lot of hurt. So an opportunity escapes Minnesota. They're going to trail nine to nothing at halftime. As we have five seconds left in this first half, Demetrius Brown will fall on it. And so on a day that's certainly not ideal for football, we've had a very entertaining first half. Minnesota has been prone to the turnover with three, and they trail as an end result, nine to nothing. third quarter club. This year they've outscored their opponents 70 to 17. Just outstanding. That's the second best offensive production in the Big Ten in that uh, third quarter. And defensively, I mean, can you imagine only giving up 
like you said, 17 points in eight games in this quarter? They take great pride in that third quarter. And right now with a 9 to nothing lead, they'd like to build on it. I think if you joined us late, we should reiterate one thing. On the first snap of the football game, the starting quarterback for Michigan injured his shoulder not to return. So Bo Schembechler, seemingly always having somebody ready to play, brought in the starter of a year ago, Demetrius Brown, and he did a creditable job. The one negative in regard to your backup quarterback, and I've had this happen to me, you're the coach, and all week long you've given two repetitions for your starter for each play and only one to your second guy. You go to call some of the more uh, sophisticated offensive plays in regard to quarterback execution, and you're a little hesitant in saying, geez, you know, I gave my other guy, Taylor, twice as many reps yep. on that play. I think I'll do something else. And it, it tends to sometimes restrict what you do with the football, even though you know he can get it done. Gutekunst, on the other hand, even though he's down nine to nothing, has to have been very complimentary of his defense. Oh, Three he... times they stopped him inside the 10, and you don't stop Michigan inside the 10-yard line very often. No, Michigan they... coming into this ball game, scoring-wise, was second in the Big Ten, averaging 30.6. So they've been beating teams, Dick, by an average of 17 points all year long. That's a heck of a margin, but their offense has been so much better. Last year at this time, they were throwing 46.5% complete. This year, they're throwing 63%. They were plus nine in turnovers coming into this ball game. Last year, they were minus one, Gary, at this time. So the turnover thing is even going more in their favor at this time. They had 22 interceptions last year. They had only two coming into this ball game. <laughs> and Taylor, the guy that threw both of them out of the game, well, Hopefully, Taylor will be able to continue as, you know, next week, Illinois comes here, and Illinois now can control their own destiny after winning today. That'll be a tough game for Michigan. Darn right, and it, the weather will not be great for the, you know, the passing attack. So this will be the first time that Minnesota kicked off in this game. Jeff Geyer will kick off. He's a junior out of Tarpon, Florida. Bowles and Colazar go back deep. You can just see the gleam on this wet surface here. Very unusual setting as we begin the second half of play. It's going to be John Colazar up to the 20, 25, 30. Colazar first to the far side of the 45, 50 to the Minnesota 48. There is a penalty flag, however. Penalty flag at the 45-yard line. What a career Colazar's had for Michigan. Flipping against Michigan. So that'll negate a fine run by Colazar, the senior out of Westlake, Ohio. A big play guy. We mentioned on each catch in his career, he's averaged almost 24 yards a grab and a touchdown catch on every fifth catch. Yeah, that's a very good ratio. When you compare that with the best in the National Football League, Mike Quick averages about one every six, or Jerry Rice about one every five last year. So you can see this guy is putting himself in, in pretty good company. His big story is he stayed healthy this year. He's been hurt his entire career. In fact, all those injuries average up to about one year missed. <laughs> oh, his dad played football here for a couple of years. No, but three years, 53, 54, and 55. So the roots are deep on this turf. The old bloodlines, right? <laughs> From the 31 after the penalty is where Michigan will start. Bowles and Bunch in the backfield. Demetrius Brown taking over for Michael Taylor early. Starts the second half. Gives to Bowles. And Bowles out to the 35-yard line. A gain of four. Second down and six. Again, here's big Ding Dingman pulling. Big offensive lineman. I, I think Getz is doing a better job of stepping up inside it and taking it on. Now, as you follow him, follow him in here, but you'll see now that Getz doesn't sit back here and let him get momentum. He goes up and meets the pulling guard. Ding Dingman, here he comes. Now, watch him go up in there. That away. Gets up in there, takes him on, turns him back up inside, rather than allowing the guy to get all the way up, you know, three or four yards across the line of scrimmage. Good job by Ron Getz, number 37. That is stats going off the field. We talked about him being a true freshman out of Winona, Minnesota, and he leads the game, and they're very thin at the linebacking core at best. Well, Second put, down and six. They put Eddie Miles in there. Bowles again, 40, 45, and he's to the 49-yard line. First down, Michigan. Lumpkin on the stop for Minnesota. 
See, they expect the inside linebacker to fill from the inside out on that, and that time, uh, Eddie Miles, number 28, wasn't able to get there. See, they want, as they turn this play back to the inside, they want these linebackers to get over here and close the door on it, and they're not getting there. Good blocking by the offensive line. Now, see, they collapse it inside. They wall it off with a great big hole in there. The linebackers can't get there, there and then Derek Walker, 89, the other tight end, is ricocheted off and come down and blocking downfield. Did you see Dengman again on that block? <laughs> Boy, he is really punishing some people. Bowles now has 133 yards on 20 carries. First down at the Michigan 49. This time the fullback, Bunch. And Bunch picks up some yardage close to the 45 of Minnesota. Maybe even further. Let's see where they're going to mark it. They'll mark it inside the 45 to the 44. He picked up seven. This is even a more of a magnification of how much they missed their great linebacker, John Lorenz, because if the starter would have been hurt, now the young player would have come in. They're down to the third inside linebacker right now. Well, Miles last year was a defensive back. They like to use him on passing situations. Right. Now he's in against everything as you look at stats as they look at his ankle. Second down, three for Michigan. From the 44 of Minnesota, 9 nothing. We've just begun the second half. Punch again. 35. Punch to the 30. Punch inside the 30 to the 27. And was that a powerful run? Boy, there's getting great movement now in the inside of the line by John Vitale, number 67, and Dingman. And they're really getting great movement. You're going to see a tremendous surge by the offensive line right here as they come off and get great surge blocking right here and open up the hole to the left center. Here it is. See that? Look at that hole up in there, Gary. You can run through that one. I might. Now, don't give me too much credit. <laughs> I'd be running pretty scared, I'll tell you that. 17-yard gain by Bunch. Boy, this third quarter starting like most Michigan third quarter. Here's Bowles That's again, and this time no place to go. He may have gotten a yard or two, but very good penetration that time, especially Miles, the guy we were talking about, another Miami, Florida guy. Well, he's been listed. Miles has been listed as an outside linebacker. Here he is playing inside, just a direct handoff, deep in the eye, good lead, power lead play, and there he comes right there, inside, inside out. That was... Uh, Max Stevens, number 94, and he isn't the biggest guy in the world at 211 pounds playing that linebacker. He runs well. Yes, he has good movement. Very Second good movement. down, eight from the 25. Wonder what Bo says at halftime. He really gets his team ready, doesn't he? The we start of the second half. I don't think we can repeat it on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Round the ball, oh, 20, oh, 15, 10, first and goal. Good isolation lead draw type play. Great blocking by the fullback, Jared Bunch. Now follow the big fullback as he leads through here and cuts down the linebacker. Just concentrate on him. See, draw blocking, turning him out. Now watch him cut. Boom, down he goes. That made a nice running lane, gave him plenty of room to sort of hurdle, and off he goes. Todd Bowles, nice game. Boy, the long strides of Bowles that time. But he has the ability to shorten it up quickly, too, Gary. First and goal now at the nine-yard line. Straight ahead football. That was Bunch. Now remember, Michigan has been stopped three times inside the 10. Now it's a second and goal at about the six. Michigan, we have seen them. This is the fifth time we've seen them. Second game we've done, but looking at their film, they like to go to the wishbone down here. They really do. Get three backs in that backfield and go after them physically. No, it doesn't appear that they're going to do it right now. Let's see. They have a double tight end alignment now with Walker and Brown checking in a tight end. And this is really tough on the defense when you go with two tight ends because it forces you to balance your front up. Callaway splits to the near side. Give to Bowles. Bowles looking for running room. The ball, was it loose? I guess not. I thought for a moment it might have been jarred loose. But he's able to hang on to it. We've seen so many turnovers in that situation. And there we go now. Third and goal. Skeeter Acree, no, Acree number eight right here, does a real nice job on this play. Follow him. Now, you know, he's the guy's had a few problems with those big offensive linemen. But Acree number 80. Now watch him work back up in there. Watch him keep working. He just stays after it, see? You it, know, I think that ball did come loose. I think it, it can. Can we see that again? Uh, it looks to me like the ball came loose, and he just came up with it again. Somebody else is down on the turf, though. It's for Michigan. That's Ramirez now. He's replacing Huzar, who was hurt early in the ball game. Well, they're running out of linemen now. Well, you know, Michael Dames is back right now from last year. Let's go Take back now, Dick. Here's the ball right there. Go ahead and roll it. Let's take a look. Hey, the ball's out. There it There's comes. the ball right there. Boy, he got it's on bouncing, it. Though. It's bouncing. It's bouncing. It's bouncing. 
It's Brown that came up. Jeff Brown who Jeff saved Brown it. Jeff Brown came up with it. It's just so hard to hang on to the football. A lot of players using the gloves. There was some talk this week. A couple of coaches saying that they thought maybe too many guys are using those gloves. They're losing the feeling in their hands. But this isn't good for Michigan. Ramirez has been playing so well. The sophomore out of Prairie View, Illinois, going to come off. So two guards now have gone down. First, Huzar, and now Ramirez. This is who they're replacing him with now. Fortunate for them. Now that must Dave Chester will probably come in and play that guard That's position, who it is. number 64. And he's had a pinch nerve problem off and on through the year. But again, Chester's had a lot of playing experience. Just yeah. shows you how they always seem to have somebody ready to go. Well, he started eight games last year, so uh, he knows what he's doing. So here we go. Third and goal from the three. Three times now. Michigan hadn't been able to get in the end zone. Inside the 10, and Minnesota's trying to keep that string going. Brown gives up, and they're not going anywhere. Bowles is stacked up. And I just can't get over how gritty, determined, and inspired this Minnesota defense they're, has been. They're playing their hearts out down there. And you notice a little fan reaction, a little booing down there. But Bo's figuring, hey, I've got a nine-point lead. I'm already in field goal range. No sense in risking a pass down here and throwing the interception with my backup quarterback. So Bo denied six again. And Gillette, who's kicked three field goals, two from 25, one from 18 yards. And this time it's going to be another 25 yarder, maybe be a 26. Looks like they're make that a 21 yarder. A 21 yard kick. And Gillette's kick is on the way, and it's good. So Gillette is perfect. As an end result, the Wolverines of Michigan have taken a 12 to nothing lead at the 9.56 mark of the second, third quarter. One was named Wilbur, the other, Orville. Two brothers who shared a belief. A belief that when the fundamentals of aeronautics were properly applied, man could fly. At Raytheon, we haven't forgotten their lesson. Consider the revolutionary new starship from Beach Aircraft, a Raytheon company. Many of the fundamentals are the same as the one built by Wilbur and Orville. Raytheon, where quality starts with fundamentals. We're not a company, but no company has more pride in what they do, or more pride in how well they do it. We offer you a meaningful and fulfilling future, one that goes far beyond the ordinary, one that brings with it the respect and admiration of Americans everywhere. We're not a company, we're your country. We're the Air Force, the Marines, the Army, the Navy. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. This week, Sunday is incredible. Human drug, high-speed rescue, horse with a hobby, and after 144 days, survival at sea. Incredible Sunday. Well, it's become quite a day for Mike Gillette. Four for four in the field goal kicking department as you watch him here, and that is going to tie a Michigan field goal record of four in a game. You know, it's amazing that he doesn't slip when he puts that plant foot down there, too, because it's got to be a little slippery. Ken Solomon was the guy that holds. Dave Wiles, the guy that snaps it. He ties Bob Wood, who was able to achieve that speed in 1975 against Stanford. Bob Bergeron against Illinois in 84. And now Gillette was still 9.56 to go in the third quarter. He couldn't break that record. Chances are he will. But again, I can't say enough for the Minnesota defense. Four times. They've held them inside the 10-yard line. Four times this guy's been called on to put it through the uprights. Gators is back deep for Minnesota. He fumbled, you might recall, an earlier kickoff. And he's having trouble with this one. Gators out to the 20. Look you, out. You won't to the 30. It's 35, 40, and not there. How often you see that happen when they bobble a kickoff, seemingly the defense gets too far down the field, and things open up, and that's, that's what happened. That's exactly what happens, Coach. They over, they outrun the, the ball, really. They get beyond it, as you see it here on your screen coming back at you. They go ahead and over cover. See, they get upfield here too far, though. There is a nice hole. You see how far up they got upfield? There's no one in front of them. One guy, now Gillette has to make the play, and he makes a miss anyway in Shaden. Here comes the defensive back to get him down. Give now to Daryl Thompson. He got a yard. Thompson, I tell you, if Gillette had slowed him down, Gators might have taken it all away. Right. 
Well, tomorrow, ABC Sports is literally off to the races. First at 10.30 a.m. Eastern and Pacific, 9.30 Central. An international field over 23,000 runners compete in the world's largest marathon, the New York City Marathon, live except on the West Coast. And then at 4 o'clock Eastern, I know you'll be watching this, Dick, 3 o'clock Central Pacific, top Indy drivers meet for the final kart race of the year. Same-day coverage of the Nissan Indy Car Challenge from Miami, Florida. Danny Sullivan will be there. Here's a gift to Thompson. Thompson able to bring it out to about the 45-yard line. Still going to be seven yards to go on third down, and we got a little shoving and pushing going on down there. Looks like Teeter going against Brian Williams. Eric Anderson's playing an awfully good football game at the inside linebacker position. He was the guy that made that last tackle. Anderson playing because John Milligan is out of the ball game because of an ankle problem. I talked to John Milligan in the training room yesterday. He feels he's going to be back for the last game of the season against Ohio State and on into the bowl season. Third down, seven. That bowl game might be in Pasadena. Back to throw, Schaffner. He sprints out of there. Needs to get wide and can't do it. Good reaction. Coming up on the fly was Trip Welburn, who has an interception of this game. What an athlete he is out of Greensboro, North Carolina. He's a dandy. He's been a wide receiver. He was a highly recruited young man as a wide receiver. Then they moved him to cornerback. Then they moved him to strong safety two weeks prior to the Notre Dame football game. And here he is playing like an all-Big Ten strong safety. Only five interceptions. I mean, that shows you what kind of athlete he is. They had worked with him a little bit in the spring at that spot. Then they moved him, as you said, two weeks for Notre Dame. That's tough. Talented athletes do make you a better coach. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> That's right. Herbal to punt the ball. Colazar back for Michigan. They try to rush him, but the footing is treacherous. Nice punt. Yes, sir. Colazar at the nine-yard line. And he's not going to get any oh. further. Good reaction. Minnesota may be trailing 12 to nothing, but they are playing inspired defense. They played extremely well defensively. Ockrey, who was shaken up in the first half, has come back, and they really give Colazar a shot on this Watch, one. I'll tell you, take your life in your own hands back there. Look at people, little face masks maybe there. there. And there comes Ockrey to make the nice play. 45-yard punt that time by Herbal. No return. 12-0, Michigan. See this phone? This is my store. And for years... My store was at the mercy of AT&T. But now, with MCI, I finally have an 800 service that charges me only for the actual distance of the calls we get and can tell me where every one of those calls is coming from. Nothing Michigan, the Honda Scholar Athlete of the Year is proudly sponsored by Honda. This week's award goes to John Jackson, a junior flanker from USC. In last week's 41-20 win over Oregon State, John had three receptions for 42 yards, and Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Southern California. John with a 3.20 major business. Not bad. Not bad. There's a lot of good students on the field here right now as you study them academically. First down, just inside the 10 for Demetrius Brown. Good coverage on that last punt by Minnesota. Brown giving off to Bowles, and Bowles picking up more yardage. Comes across the 15 to the 17. Let's go to Becky Dixon. Gary, I just received word from the Michigan dressing room. Starting quarterback Michael Taylor has fractured his collarbone. He will not be able to return for the rest of the regular season. However, Michigan doctors say he might be able to come back for a bowl game. Wow, thank you, Becky. Isn't that amazing? That's he landed luck. on it. No one was on top of him. 
He just was sprinting out, tried to get rid of the football, and landed. And it's just how he landed on it that caused all that. Yeah, plus, the AstroTurf is not the softest yeah. pad when you land on it. Is it softer when it gets wetter or is it worse? Well, I, I think that the players would just as soon play on it when it's wet, but I don't think it changes its density. Second down, two on this play. Give to Bowles again. And Bowles, prior to that carry, at 161 yards. You know, in Michigan history, Ron Johnson went over 150 yards four times. The record is shared by Jamie Morris and Rob Lytle. Twice, I should say five times, they went over 150 yards. You got to remember, Bowles is just a sophomore. <laughs> it's nice to be running behind those big horses. Doesn't hurt, does it? Yeah. Doesn't hurt at all. Can you imagine what Daryl Thompson would look like running behind oh, those big horses? Not that his offensive line isn't blocking as hard as they can. First down now for Michigan from the 20-yard line. I formation backfield. Colazar comes in motion. Leroy Horde and Leroy gets a couple of yards to the 22. You know, you talk about the education, Dick, how many good students are represented on this field. It is an education plane for Bo Schimbeckel. Oh, it is, because first off, you get the great fundamental approach to the game and you get the great discipline and a consistent discipline that every player, I mean, we have kids playing for Michigan on the field today that their dads received the same discipline. They've gone on to be successful in the business world and raise their families. There's no substitute for a program that adds a real quality of discipline and integrity. Look at that, Bowles has outgained Minnesota by 100 yards. Second down, eight now for the Wolverines. 12-0, continuing to rain. Boy, it has been a wet, sloppy day. Brown back to throw. Derek Walker, the tight end, first down to the 45. You're going to see big Derek Walker coming off. He hits the seam. He's coming off from right over here to the left of your screen. Now play action pass. The motion man stretches the defense. He comes down. He's running around on Joel Brown, number nine. And he moves back to the inside, and he is the better receiver of the tight ends. He catches that. Not quite nifty enough to get his body turned and become a sprinter. But he made sure he got it. 24-yard gain out to the 45-yard line. So Derek Brown with his completion setting up the first down. Gives to Bowl. Bowl goes oh. nowhere. Slam down by Mike Sunbowl. Let's go back to Becky. All right, thank you very much, Gary. With me is the head diving coach here at the University of Michigan, Mr. Dick Kimball. Earlier this year, he was named the NCAA Diving Coach of the Year. Dick, what's been the secret to your great success here at Michigan? Well, I think we've had a lot of great divers come here, but uh, the athletic department is a very close-knit group, and there's a lot of support among all sports, and I think that's helped tremendously. As many of you people know, your son Bruce, one of this country's top divers, was earlier this year charged with vehicular manslaughter. What's the status of his trial? Well, they've delayed his trial for a month, and uh, Bruce is in school right now, and he's just waiting to, for the trial to come out. This, of course, has been such a trying time for your entire family. Where have you gone for strength? Well, I think the whole family has been close ever since uh, Bruce's accident in 1981, and we're just trying to go to each other, plus the diving world's been very, very good to me and Bruce. All right, thank you very much, Dick Kimball. You're welcome. Gary? Thank you, Becky. Third down, three yards to go. Bowles continues to mount the yardage. Stevens made the stop on Tony Bowles the last time. Boy, they just reload, don't they? Jamie Morris last year, Bowles this year. Bowles a sophomore. He's two backups are sophomores. Third and three. Oh, good hit. Yep. Good hit. And Bunch was the recipient of that hit as he makes it to the 45. Looks like he's a yard short of the first down. Down the field, McMurtry is tangled up with one of the defensive guys, McCree. But what happens in every game sooner or later, the defensive secretary resents how hard those wide receivers block. I know it. In the last game we did at Michigan, you know, the, I don't know how many colleges coach it as intensely as they do here, but they were knocking defensive backs down, and, and there ended up being a couple fights that game. Gillette, whose last punt went eight yards, will go back and punt for Michigan. Standing yes, at the 40-yard line and back to receive the punt, it's going to be Frank Jackson. So Gillette, who downed his own punt the last time, will get this one, the snap, and the boot. Not a good one, but it may take a bounce. Splashes inside the 10, 5. Did they kill it in the field of play? I think they may have. Let's see, there's a penalty flag at the 21-yard line. 
It wasn't an artistic punt, but it certainly was an effective one. It'll be ruled a 44-yarder, but let's see where it was down. Bobby Abrams was down there, the linebacker, to try to kill it. Well, they're indicating what? Tackling by face mask. They're still standing like the half yard line, like he did kill it in the field of play. Obviously, he did. I thought his feet may have gotten in. The punt returner should have uh, fielded that ball. Yeah. You should never allow a ball to run. Now, you don't field one inside the 10. Timeout, timeout. Yeah. We've got time to sort this one out. We're going to take a break. 12 to nothing, Michigan, 254 in the third. If you thought you had to give up comfort to get a close shave, Norelco says, think again. Their revolutionary shaving system shaves skin close in a way that's incredibly comfortable. As the hair enters the chamber, the patented lift and cut system lifts each hair and holds it a split second before a blade cuts it, so it's possible to shave skin close without the blades even touching the skin. The lift and cut shaving system from Norelco. We made close comfortable. My dandruff shampoo is good. Better try something else. Mine really works. You'd better try something else, like Selsun Blue. Doctors recommend it more than all of the leading brands. None get rid of dandruff better than Selsun Blue. The people who count on my brakes are important to me. So the people who work on my brakes are important to me. The people who work on your brakes at Midas are trained brake experts. Remember, nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've got a leak here. Somewhere in the wall. I just hope I can get to it before it gets too bad. At times like this, now you can choose this. New maximum strength Pepto-Bismol. Now there's twice the medicine, twice the Pepto. Ah. Now the ball hits on the 16-yard line, Gary, and the young re return man should go over and field that ball. Now it's rolling in toward the goal line, and you see Trip Wilborn, number three, came, coming over to get it. It appears that he goes in the end zone, but once he gets into the end zones, he never has possession of the football. So they rule that he didn't wasn't in the end zone, and possession goes to Michigan. Little shaky, little shaky. At the one-yard line, Indiana with the football. Check that, Minnesota with the football. Here we go, straight ahead handoff. They are able to punch it out to about the three-yard line area. Octavius Gould trying to find some operating room. There he is, number 60 again, Messner. Well, if you want to establish your fullback game, I guess this is about the, the oh. toughest spot in the world to do, try to do it. Drop sack, fine-looking sophomore out of Minneapolis. We've talked about Brian Williams, his daddy, Bob Williams, the former Notre Dame quarterback. Duda Kuntz, I don't think he knows it's even raining right now. Yeah. Look at his glasses. they got to be steamed over. Yeah. They're at about the two now, second and nine. Boy, in the weather like it is, it's tough to hang on to the football here. Play action. Schaffner rolling out, throws, complete to Jason Bruce, and he's got the first down. Very gutsy call from the end zone, and Schaffner pulls it off for Minnesota. Just a quarterback rollout. Here he is. He's going to come right on out. He's getting the help of the blockers, getting out in front of him. That's a good call. Gets a little fake there, comes on, rolling on out. The fake helps freeze the defense inside. He throws it out there. You notice how the defensive back at that time came up, set, squared his feet. He didn't want to miss that tackle. Yeah, that's right. Todd Flake's the guy you're talking about, playing a place with the injured David Arnold. That gets him out of a jam. You bet. Gives him room to operate. First down at the 12-yard line for the Gophers. They go to the wishbone. And a whistle will stop everything. Patrick Cummings was in on that offensive set that time as they went to three backs. Cummings, a junior out of Madison, Wisconsin. A legal procedure against Minnesota. By the way, we, something we should also add, there was a penalty on that ball being down, but there was no way to take any kind of a penalty yardage when you got it about the half yard line. What do you do, move it a half, six inches? And so 
Minnesota now trying to build on this after coming out of their own one yard line area. The penalty now makes it first and 15. Moves the ball back to the seven yard line. From our vantage point, you can probably see it on TV with the glare of the lights. You can't even see the yard line markers around the 10 and the 5. What I yep. Evidently, the clock is uh, being readjusted. It's a 2.03. They want to move it back to the 2.08 mark. The way this weather is, I'm sure everybody wants at least three or four more seconds, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, how about this for a Monday night matchup? Bernie Kozar and the Cleveland Browns, two AFC Central Division rivals, as he'll go against the Houston Oilers. I tell you, the Oilers are playing tough. They are, but I tell you this, to do a good job against Cleveland, everyone talks about Kozar, it's their defense. They're forcing people to run 62 plays before they score a touchdown. That's a lot of offense before you get in the end zone. Oh, you can say that again. There's been some surprising developments. Boy, Houston just kicking their last game, the Skins. Houston's kind of a football team. It's kind of got a nasty, nasty disposition, don't they? People yeah. always complain about them. Well, their coach, it used to be a defensive coordinator of the Atlanta Falcons. And I'll tell you, when we coached against him when I was the Philadelphia Eagles, it was always Jerry a bloodbath. Jerry Glanville. There's an air of intensity that he creates within a squad, and sometimes it goes beyond intensity. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a little bit late. <laughs> a lot late sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> too late, too late. Bo said, come on, guys, let's get this game going. Yeah, they're running the clock down now. There it goes down. They wanted a 2 8 and they got it there. All right, here we go now. First and 15 for Minnesota. They have it at their own seven-yard line. They'll have Gators split out to the near side. High formation backfield. 12 nothing. Michigan with the lead. All of that coming on field goal. Give straight ahead, and Patrick Cummings able to wedge it out to about the 10-yard line. They got a long ways to go, though. Going to bring up second down, and still about 13 yards to go. Red White on the stop. Minnesota last year won their first five games of the year. Then they lost four in a row. This year, still looking for their first Big Ten triumph. Their wins coming against Miami of Ohio and Northern Illinois. Second down, a long 12 to go for Schaffner and the Gophers. Thompson. And Thompson brings it out close to the 15-yard line. Thompson. Still going to be eight yards short of the first down. J.J. Grant was there to make the stop. Mark Mesner is facing the enemy right now, two on one. He's getting outnumbered. They're doubling him with a guard and a tackle in this situation. You'll see both of these guys come and wall him off, knock him back to help provide that hole. But when you block two guys on one with this kind of blocking, that's going to help somebody else get up in there. Here they go. Nice place by J.J. Grant, number 95. J.J. Grant really becoming one of the premier linebackers in the Big Ten. Bo thinks he's one of the best. Third down, a long seven. Schaffner, Gators, he can't hang on. And Gators has had a long day. He has. He doesn't like the cold weather. He's from Zanesville, Ohio. He should Didn't like it. Yeah, he should like it. About 35 miles from Columbus. You'll see him. He's going to come off the line of scrimmage. Here on the right-hand side of your screen. He's coming off, running on David Key. He pushes real good. Good forward body tilt. Now he plants his feet, comes back. A little turn in right there. Oh, he should have caught the football. It's a low end of the inside, but the receiver's got to make that play. So Herbal He's... will go back and punt for Minnesota. This Herbal, you know what they call him? A puntaholic. He likes to punt the football so much, they call him a puntaholic. I've never heard that term before. Colasar from the 50. 40. Still on his feet. What a run by Colasar to the 30 yard line. John Colasar having a strong game. 22 yard return. 37 yard punt. Michigan has the football. It has a classic design and an engine. That scenario about how Miami of Florida could still win the national championship. You start developing it all with UCLA beating USC, USC beating Notre Dame. Dame. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Here we go now. Bowles, Bowles to the 25 is stopped after about a five-yard pickup. We have 30 seconds left in this third quarter. It's 12 to nothing. Michigan. Michigan led nine to nothing after one half a play. They've added a field goal in the third quarter. The crowd announced at 102,171, which means it's the 84th consecutive crowd of 100,000 plus. But I'll tell you right now, 
There's not 102,000 people here right now, and I don't blame them. <laughs> I'd have stayed home myself, I think. So we're going to come to the end of this third quarter. And so after three quarters of play, 12 nothing, Michigan. ABC's college football will continue after this message and a word from... Dick Vermeil and Becky Dixon. I'm Gary Bender. We begin the fourth quarter. Michigan with a 12 to nothing lead. They have a second down six operating from the Minnesota 26 yard line. Demetrius Brown off to Bowles. Bowles trying to go wide. Has the corner. And nice that's boom as he belled it out of bounds at the 24 by Les O'Hara. A free safety flying over there. Also Lumpkin. And I'll tell you, Lumpkin has been something special. We knew that they felt his potential is unlimited, but he has played better than you would expect a man his first year on a college campus to play. Yeah, and he came there as a running back, averaging six yards a carry as a running back. Now he's trying to prevent somebody else from averaging six yards a carry. Bowles now, 177 yards, 30 carries. Third down, three now for Michigan. Just underway in the fourth quarter. Brown wants to throw. He's got time. Throwing. McMurtry wide open. Touchdown, Michigan. played all that much this year coming up with that touchdown toss his second of the year McMurtry latches on to his second of the year 23 yards the first touchdown of the game and Gillette adds a point after and it's a 19 to nothing game McMurtry probably feels a little bit better. He had an 84-yarder for a touchdown call back last week when John Vitale, the fine offensive center, got a little too excited downfield on it and had the call back on him. Now we had a penalty flag on the point after. Gillette's kick was good. Let's see what exactly will come out of this. Boy, McMurtry, somebody was wide open on that one. I mean, he just had nobody close to him. I think they went to a two-deep zone, and McMurtry ran in down there, took made a move at the safety, then broke for the corner, and the safety just released him. And there it was, six points. Both penalties going against Minnesota. So the point after will stand. One a personal foul, the other an illegal man on the field. McMurtry's an interesting guy. You know, a pretty good college uh, baseball player. Hit 299 last year. Taking a look at this, it's just a straight drop back pass. You see Demetrius coming out there again, Gary. Look at that left-handed pass. <laughs> hey, not too bad, though. Right where he had to go, as you can see the safety was way back up inside, and Charles McCree, number three, was rotated up in the flat. It was definitely a two-deep zone with uh, covering four short, and he just beat the safety. The safety didn't keep going to the corner. Take another look at it. Here he is laying it right where he had to throw it. Outside. Here it is, right where he had to put it. Fancy perfuming aftershave. It's got to be a quarterback's locker. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice blue aqua velva. There's something about today's aqua velva, man. Look for aqua velva Christmas gift sets. Got a nice minty taste to it. <laughs> That's good. Can you say that about your liquid antacid? If not, taste new Tums liquid. It has a nice taste to it. It's delicious. Tums taste the best. New Tums liquid. It works, and it really tastes good. Designed for comfortable travel over time and distance. The Honda Prelude SI, a slightly ahead of its time machine.
continuing to rain and some of the cheerleaders here at Michigan Stadium making the most of it. Is that a Wolverine? No, that's the gopher. That's a gopher. <laughs> Shows you how much I know about animals. Huh? Well, they're close. <laughs> <laughs> or you're going hunting next week, too. Yeah, I'm I not am. sure I want to yeah. hunt with you. But I don't hunt gophers. <laughs> <laughs> Onside attempt. And I think Minnesota got it. Oh, that's a surprise. Well, you're right there in that field position. You might as well. Minnesota was not fooled. Gillette trying the onsider. Look at, he's upset. Now, the reason they tried that was because the penalty the was penalty. assessed after the point after, so right. they were kicking with a great position and tried the onsider, and Minnesota came away with it. Well, they had two penalties. They had two penalties. You see the ball rolling down. Look at that glare on the screen. It's hard for me to see. That water really creates a reflection. Another flag on that, huh? Well, the penalty, let's see what the, how that will affect it as uh, Minnesota will have the ball to 26. It's offside against Michigan. Penalty declined. First down. So the Gophers still looking for their first points against the top-ranked scoring defense of the Big Ten, holding teams to 13.3, and right now they have a shutout. From the 26, the Gophers. Schaffner sprinting far side, throwing far side, and on the completion to Jason Bruce, who brings it out to the 34. That was Trip Welburn, who has an interception of this ball game, over to make the stop. You know, Michigan over the years has had a history of guys that play that strong safety position real well. They used to call it the Wolfman, remember? Yep. Then they started to change that because of what was happening and what the offenses were doing. They made it legal to throw the ball in the Big Ten, you know, and I, you, I had the opportunity to coach one of those guys for seven years and Randy Logan who was yeah. a great player and just one of the outstanding people I've ever had the opportunity to work with. Don Dufek, remember him? He played yeah. there. Here is Octavius Gould carrying the ball. He got maybe two yards and we have another penalty fly. So Gould bent backwards and they're going to again have to figure out what that handkerchief's all about. T.J. Osmond made the stop. With this little break, let's remind you tonight here on ABC, Mike Connors hosts tonight an ABC special revealing some of the most horrendous crimes you can imagine. The crimes of the century. And Robert Conrad is a cop framed for murder. The all-new police story tonight on ABC. <laughs> I'm not Look at that guy. Uh, yeah, I, take it. I want his hat to hunt with Monday. <laughs> it's red because yeah. you, you need to wear red when yeah, you hunt. Yeah, you have to have so much orange. Look. <laughs> Is that orange? I'm colorblind. I well, guess. it depends on which monitor you look at. <laughs> <laughs> We're in good shape. You don't know the animals, I can't tell the colors. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you have to admit that wasn't really... I thought it might have been a Wolverine. You know? <laughs> I've never seen a Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell Bo that you messed up his mascot. He'll hey, have something to say to you I don't want him mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the penalty now makes it second and 17 against Minnesota. 13.52 to go in the game. Schaffner. Incomplete. That was Bruce again, the intended receiver. Todd Plate defending. I'll tell you what, if you look at Schaffner's stats, really not fair. He's had a lot of passes dropped in this game. He has. And, you know, I, I sort of feel in watching him from the first quarter on that he's he's growing a little bit with the experience and getting better, a little more sure of himself. Every pass he's thrown has been close enough to catch. And, you know, and he's such a bright guy. He, you know, he graduated with darn near a 4.0 in high school. That's pretty good. Can't get much better than that. About two points better than mine. <laughs> he's 6 of 12 for 67 yards. He did suffer that one interception. It was really a deflection yeah. off of his receiver. Schaffner on the option, short side of the field, pitches back. Thompson didn't have a lot of operating room. Goes out of bounds just across the 20. I'm often a bit curious, Coach, why you'd run an option to the short side like that. Well, because you get an overshift the defense. Michigan, like most colleges do, the first thing they defend is the field. And with the hash mark all the way over there, they go ahead and move the defense to the wide field, and so the offense is forced from time to time I to run you. over there. That's Michael Taylor, by the way, that's being escorted back out. He came back after suffering that broken collarbone to watch and to kind of encourage his teammates as Herbal almost gets this pot blunt. They call roughing the punter. And that's exactly what they got, a flag as Herbal down at the 15-yard line. Colazar fielded it, only be a 28-yard punt. 
but we're going to have, let's see if it's a five yard or Forward. it's a roughing or running I think, in. I think they've got to call that roughing. Yeah, they do. That's it. So that'll yeah, be a first down. That. That'll be a first down for Minnesota. Yeah. Well, in the first quarter, if we remember back, Minnesota gave Michigan a first down on, on a third down play with a personal foul. Now, this one gives uh, Minnesota the first down. Flying through the air. A lot of bodies in there on that one. Kind of hard to sort out who did make the contact. With so many people going in there like that, you, sometimes you bounce off each other. So they're going to get it by penalty, and they're going to have the first down out across the 35 to the 36-yard line. The field almost looks like it has a sheer of ice out there. It's got that funny look to it, doesn't it? Where the, uh, if it got cold, it might ice up on you. I don't know what the temperature is, but it's getting down there. Rained the entire game, rained the entire day yesterday. They did have the field covered. You never know it now. First down at the 36 for Minnesota. 19-0. Michigan taking another step towards Pasadena. The ball is loose. I think that's Brian Williams, 63, who came up with it. You I don't think Kostner ever got the ball. Do you see who caused that? Messner. Messner. Oh, is he quick? That's a good guess. I oh, yeah. it. I know it. He is so quick down here. If you don't have your inside gap protected as an offensive lineman and he's moving to it, here he is right there in the middle of your screen, number 60. He took a slant out move. He's all the way into the backfield there, right at the exchange point. <laughs> you can see the trouble he gives an offensive oh, line boy. and a quarterback. He just explodes, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And you never know where he's going to line up. No, and they always put him normally to the wide side of the field. Second there he goes on 11. He's coming up the middle. Schaffner throwing, and that's a fine catch. A beautiful catch by Gators, who struggled all day long. I'll tell you, that was a nice throw, too. He had heat coming. A Messner was coming up the middle, had stunned inside there and beaten the man inside. He was coming right in his face and did a real nice job. Now, watch Messner as he beats up inside there and gets the pressure. See, he gets a little help from the running back there. Now he gets get back after him. Here comes that square in pattern. Well done. That's the toughest catch he had to make all day. 21 yes, yard gain sets it up at the Michigan 45. So Minnesota on the move here with 12.36 to go in the game. Schaffner back again. Schaffner on target again. And the catch is made, doubling up very effectively to come up with that grab as Gators again. Let's go to New York. All right, Gary, a dramatic finish in Tuscaloosa. 28 seconds to go from 34 yards out. David Browndike hits at LSU by one. As time expired, Philip Doyle missed from 54 yards out. Didn't miss by much. Alabama fails. LSU and Georgia are tied in the SEC. What a win for Mike Archer. Earlier this year, we had Ohio State defeating LSU here on ABC. Schaffner on a shovel pass forward. It's to Gould, the fullback, and Gould is to the 20-yard line. That was a first down shovel pass, and they pick up about six on the play. Messner again on the stop. And a lot of fight in this Minnesota team, as now Shane Strain comes in at tight end with the play information. You know, when you were talking about good students a little while ago, Shane Strain just coming into the ballgame as a National Scholar Athlete Award winner coming out of high school. Outstanding student in biology. He's their leading receiver at tight end, filling a lot for Craig Otto, who's been hurt and had some academic problems. Second down, four. Schaffner's near side, and Gators, nope, he didn't get this one. He tried to con his way into that one. They say, the coordinator Larry Beckish says that Gators is as good as the best athlete he has ever been around. That's a compliment. He was a Prop 48 kid, had to battle back from that, very discouraged about it, has fought through it, and just a quality football player. You know, and he ended up taking the test again and passing it, but he didn't take it on a national date. He took it on a regional date, not knowing that it wouldn't count unless it was taken on a, a national date. So he had to lay out a whole well, year because of it. His advisor told him to compete in a track meet. <laughs> and it was too late. Yeah. Third down, four. Pitch comes back. Thompson. Thompson makes a big cut, and did he slice some yardage off there? That was an impressive move. That'll be a first down to the 11-yard line. Did you see how he cut and got the shoulders up the field? We have a man shaken up for Michigan. J.J. Grant went down. He's their fine linebacker we were talking about. Here he is. It's an eye toss. The straighter went down here. He's moving in the middle of your screens. He stunts off, moving inside out, left to right. He's get, he's held up with a blocker there. Oh, he got 
popped and blocked right there with when he was in contact with another person. When you're in contact with somebody else and fighting off it, here's Messner chasing it down from behind. He is all over the place. That's why they say in the National Football League they think this guy will make a, a, a fine linebacker playing inside rather than a down lineman. Not big enough to be a down lineman. So Grant is down and uh, now trying to get back up. As we mentioned, this junior out of Liverpool, New York, has really come on his own. Last year he had some problems against the sweep. They took him out of the starting lineup. He's battled back, though, calls the defensive signals. Their leading tackler. Here's Messner again to the right side of your screen. Coming around the outside. Now the quarterback comes his way on fake, and he just gives him a little shoulder shrug. Boom, take that. A little one? A little one. By the way, remember now, Minnesota, with this opportunity, coming on the heels of that roughing the kicker. And as an end result now, they have it first down at the 11-yard line. So they're trying to capitalize on it. That last run by Thompson, nine yards. Lloyd he has Carr. 45 on 13 for the day. Lloyd Carr, the fine defensive coordinator at the University of Michigan, was telling us the other day that J.J. Grant is the tremendous leader on the defense, and they can't afford him to have him out, maybe physically, but boy, when you lose him, you lose your leader on defense. It's devastating, as we said earlier in regard to LeBrun's. They've already lost their leader on offense and Taylor for the rest of the year. First down, Schaffner looking, throwing, and incomplete. Almost picked off. Good coverage. Todd Plate was over there, so was Welburn for Michigan. Todd Plate's a walk-on, and he's a guy that for two years did nothing but just service the uh, offense being the opponent's defensive corner and he showed great character in special teams and he just worked his way into the, the starting lineup that's a great salute to that young man he's from brooklyn brooklyn michigan michigan now by mis michigan international speedway i know that one <laughs> long ways from brooklyn new york yeah you bet second down 10 now from the 11 yard line high formation backfield Schaffner, a little shovel pass to Gould. Gould to the 10, Gould to the 5, and Boy, Gould to the 3. Boy, you know that Gould is a sophomore. Daryl Thompson's a junior. Scott Schaffner, the quarterback, is a redshirt freshman. That's a pretty talented backfield coming up. Now, you'll follow this. Play action, follow the fullback, 32, as he blocks Marshall, 59. Then he wheels off it and gets the shuffle pass. <laughs> Clever, good design, good offensive execution as well. They're about two yards short of a first and goal. Well, they have two downs to make the first down. That's the way they've got to think. They're getting in the bone. Third down. Here they come into the wishbone, as Dick pointed out. 10-26 to go in this football game. Pitch to Thompson. Thompson trying to go wide. Thompson to the five, to the corner, and goes out of bounds. And an official is really sideswiped on the near sideline. Todd Plate had the good angle on that. So it's going to bring up a fourth down. They just tossed the ball back to Darrell Thompson, number 29. There he is, 39. See him toss it back there deep. Now, the defense does a good job of preventing Gary the inside cut, and they just chase him to the sideline. The sideline is the best tackler on the field. It never misses. Never misses. Good hustle, though, by Todd Plate. And look at the official. He disappears for a while. You can't even see him. He's below the camera. Now it's fourth down, still two to go for a first and goal. Minnesota, you might recall on it, man, the official really shaken up. They're going to have to, right now, take a break in the action. Timeout, 10-18 to go. 19-0. Michigan, fourth down, coming up for Minnesota. We help protect your plans and dreams. Our agents are the key. It's triple jump. It's boom, boom, boom. You make the right choices, you get to the it's prize. Huge. One of those prizes is Pontiac Grand Prix. I okay. got a winner here. I don't believe it. <laughs> yes! Yeah! Millions 
of people are winning big at Burger King. Betty McCoy won a Pontiac Grand Prix. Robin Fortune won a Carnival Cruise. And Larry Wilson won $10,000. There are still millions of prices to win, so hurry in and play triple jump checkers at Burger King. 10,000 balloons. Jack. 88,000 safety pins. Jack. Two and a half tons of bagels. Jack. 22,000 runners. Okay, we're on. The New York City Marathon, live tomorrow on ABC Sports. After struggling with Oregon for three quarters, UCLA is trying to make a move. Ronnie Brian Brown, 68-yard touchdown. They missed the extra point, and they lead Oregon now. UCLA does 16 to 6, but they haven't looked good so far today. Gary? Well, Al, that's been tough for UCLA to come back from last week. But Oregon's a good football team. Yes, they are. They only had one loss in the Pac-10, right, to USC? Rich Brooks does a great oh, job. Then Arizona State upset him, too. That's right. Fourth down, here we go. Earlier in the game, you might recall, Minnesota converted on a fourth down. Now we have a stoppage again. Timeout being called by Michigan. You know, with two downs to make a first down, me sitting up here as a coach calling the offense, I'd have run him at him twice, straight at him, rather than run parallel to the line of scrimmage so far. As Thompson tried to do. Let's go to Becky Dixon. Gary, for the first time ever, the University of Michigan is promoting an individual player for postseason honors. Not surprisingly, that player is Mark Messner. With these brochures, the university is trying to help him win the Lombardi Award, given each year to college football's outstanding linemen. Now, this has never happened here at Michigan before. The reason for Bo Schembechler's change of heart? Well, there are so many intangibles where Mark Messner is concerned. His outstanding leadership on the field, and also he does a great deal of community service work here in Michigan. To the University of Michigan, Mark Messner is a whole lot more than an All-American tackle. Gary? Thank you, Becky. He gets my vote. Yeah, okay. he's a good one. There's no yes, great... I like Becky's lid. You like... I gotta get yeah, I'm going to get one of those hats. <laughs> I like that. Those are going to be in vogue now. Yeah, she yeah. wore that. They're in fashion yeah. now. I wonder if she got that on Rodeo Drive. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> anyway, Michigan calling that timeout. Michigan has two timeouts remaining, as does Minnesota. We have 10-18 to go in this game. It's fourth down, two yards to go for a first and goal. They can pick up a first and goal at about, what, the one-yard line? Yes, they can. But your point was a good one, Dick, about running wide like that on a sloppy field, wet. What is it, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line? Yeah, especially with, with the two downs to get the two yards. But they must be feeling that, you know, the, the physicalness of the Michigan defense, they haven't really been able to knock them out of there at any one time. No sense in forcing the issue. But uh, like I said earlier, that sideline's the best tackler. Well, Bo Schembechler would like to keep a shutout going. And you know, Minnesota wants to go back home with at least something on the scoreboard, and this is their chance to do it. Well, you know, last week, with 51 seconds to go, they had a three-point lead on Illinois. Here we go. Fourth down two. Schaffner, Gould, Gould, he's, I believe, got a first and goal. He has it. Boy, that was a great surge by that offensive line. Well, they ran over the right guy, Brian Williams, number 63, the fine offensive left guard that is said to be the best offensive guard in the Big Ten. Big, strong guy. Good over there. Measure. He doesn't want him to measure. Well, I didn't think there was any question. Look at the size of that guy. No. 305 pounds. Now, how would you like to be a college linebacker at, at 215, 220 pounds and line up and see that big gorilla right in front of you all day long? Huh? <laughs> Better take a lot of aspirin before the game. Look at that. There it is, first and goal. You know, and Williams is a kid that almost left Minnesota. He almost left Minnesota because he wasn't really happy and he had some problems his first couple of years. Now they're running right behind him up in a critical time, and you can see that good surge allowed that first down to, to be, or an attempt to be successful. Here's another good look at it. Coming off there, double knocking him out of there. Good job. In the wishbone this time, the Gophers. First and goal at the one-yard line. Thompson. And Thompson got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Number 55 in there defensively is Mark Spencer, a sophomore out of Troy, Michigan, a big, strong linebacker. One of the biggest linebackers they've had in years. Well, and Lloyd Carr said he is the biggest linebacker. They, they list him at a little over 245, but they've got him down to 235 now, and they feel that he moves much better at that size. Well, Minnesota made some great stands inside the 10-yard line, and now Michigan trying to duplicate that. There's Messner, and they just kind of they kind of rally around him, don't they? Yes, they do. Second and goal, and that's how far they have to go. Yeah. 
Dopner, Thompson again, and no, it's not in there again. It's third down. That didn't get started very well. It looked like he had thoughts of going airborne and never did do it. Yeah, he, there was penetration. He couldn't get his feet up off the ground. Spencer, Anderson, the inside linebacker. Look at Coach. On tape. Coach Gutekunst taking a look at that. Hey, oh, my God. Come on, get it in there, guys. You're only a foot and a half away. I could do it myself. Like he was a pretty good player. Well, he, I tell you, he was a good football player, Duke, and baseball player. Yeah. Majored in religion. Yep. And he's a football coach. This is testing his religion right now. <laughs> That's right. Third down goal. He's and in. Schaffner diving, and Minnesota has scored. Schaffner diving straight ahead. That's his third touchdown rushing to the air. Just a good search by the offensive line. You can see him come off. They're all wait for it. Four-point stance firing out low. He just jumps up over the top there, and he's in there clearly. Good job by the offensive line of keeping the Michigan defensive lineman down there and not letting them come up. Well, there's no quit in Minnesota. No Unbelievably, quit. Dick, they were 30-point underdogs coming into this game. Well, that can show you it can show you what you do when, you, when you're emotionally pumped up and ready to go. And Bo said all week, this is about as good a week of preparation as he's had. They're very emotional. Messner said he was exhausted. They've worked so well and so hard. Berglund, point after attempt, is on the way. It's good. And it's a 19-7 game. Eight and a half minutes to go. And the Golden Gophers have reached the end zone. At UPS, we're changing the face of the international delivery business. Because now, UPS delivers to every country in Western Europe, the Pacific Rim, Down Under, and Canada. And because we're so efficient, we can deliver your international parcels and documents for fewer francs, yen, or drachmas than other companies charge. And let's face it, a drachma saved is a drachma earned. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. When you need tools, any kind of tools, for every kind of job, one name gives you more good choices than any other. Craftsman. From the frigid Great Lakes. The Arkansas surplus. That's all I ever needed. To the icy mountains of Oregon. It's been excellent for me. More and more Americans are taking Alcacel Plus cold medicine. Fast, effective relief for tough winter colds. In a word, it works. The 1947 Rose Bowl is the first between teams from the Big Ten and Pacific Coast Conference under their Rose Bowl agreement. It's Illinois against UCLA. For UCLA, the biggest thrill is provided by 144-pound Al Hoish when the little speedster set his Rose Bowl record by returning a second quarter kickoff, 103 yards for a touchdown. But the Fighting Illini went on to win the football game 45-14. Well, Michigan, I think, will have better weather if they'd end up in Pasadena for the Rose Bowl. Yeah. You broadcast that game, didn't you? <laughs> that one? Not quite. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> I mean, I'm aging a lot working with you, but I'm not that old. Yeah, I mean, for me, I used to be young and spry and really had a lot of vitality, and now I'm just making it from game to game. <laughs> 19 I won't say anything. I won't say a word. <laughs> Geyer will kick off for Minnesota. 19-7, the Wolverines. And he's going to try the onside kick. Did it go far enough? No, it didn't. Boy, that was a very peculiar kick. He almost missed the ball. It looked to me I like. Have, I've seen people do that before successfully. I was, I really didn't anticipate them kicking an onside kick. Well, we that. talked about a commercial break, right, and you said I, that. You didn't think. Boy, Geyer got bent straight backwards. That's, he may have gotten hurt. I don't know. Number 40. They're still unpiling. It looked like he almost missed the ball, and Michigan's going to have the football. He did that on purpose. He, it didn't go 10 yards. They're still fighting in there for the ball. Let's look in at it again. In the middle of the screen. Now watch him just tap it. Now he's trying to recover it himself. Now watch him take a shot. Boom! Oh, man. He, he had to be awfully limber <laughs> to avoid an knee injury there. Mitchell really unloaded on him, number 90. Taking a look at that shot again. I'll tell you, if he ever sees this, he'll never try, try that onside kick again. Look I, at him, he's trying to cut. <laughs> he won't slide down like that. See, I'll and guarantee. that's legal. He's blocking in front of the recovery people on the onside kick uh, receiving teams. Well, he's all right, but uh, they didn't get the football. 
So at the 45 of Minnesota, Michigan has it after the onside attempt. The rain continuing to fall. 8.30 left in this game. Demetrius Brown, who's taken over since Taylor went down on the first snap, rolling to the near side. That's too short, intended for Derek Walker. Becky, are you still down there? <laughs> Just barely. I'm very, very wet, Gary. An injury report on linebacker uh, Grant. He is out for today's game with a sprained knee. He possibly could return next week, Dr. Say. Okay, Becky, they may need him. That Illinois game is going to be a handful for Michigan. And when you can throw the ball like they can in Illinois, it's a pain in the neck for a team that doesn't see it every week. Oh, yeah. Jeff George, Keith Jones, they've got a lot of offense. Second down 10 now at the 44. Second down 10 for the Michigan Wolverines. This is Bowles. And Bowles to about the 40. Gain of four. Third down coming up. Well, let's talk about next week. Where are we going to be? Where would you like to be? Well, <laughs> well, we're going to be in Indiana. We're going to be in Indiana. But <laughs> USC against Arizona State. Now, I'm telling you, Arizona State's playing well. They've won their last two. They've changed quarterbacks. Gone it's to because Paul it's your Justin. hometown. It's your hometown, no, your root. No, That's no, what you're I'm doing. Just, I'm warning you about that game. And then we're going to see Michigan State has won four in a row now. They're still in the hunt. They're, they're, they're fired. They've got to be playing a lot better than the last time we saw them. They'll be going against Indiana, who lost by one today to Illinois. Third down, seven. With a double pass, it works. Ford breaking out of there. First down inside the 25. Pumpkin on the stop. Boy, we've had a lot of shovel passes on both sides of the football, both teams, this using is it very effectively. This is a little cl more clever now. They take the guard, he hops back, and then bring him around on it to lead on that shuffle pass. So they get an, a guy leading the interference. Now see Chester, number 64, come around. They flip it. Now there's a blocker right out in front of him at about 265 pounds. He gets the nice Ooh. block. You can see him getting a nice cut block right here. Chester's the third guard they've used today. Started out with Huzar, then they... Ended up getting Ramirez hurt. Now to Chester. And here's Bowles. Bowles inside the 20. A flag. Flag down. He goes down at the 18. Ron Jett over there to make the stop. I think they called holding on uh, the tight end. I think it's uh, Jeff Brown holding on Anthony Bryant, number 95. There's Vitaly. Now, you talk about a swashbuckling type guy. John he Vitaly, he comes up. And he starts carrying on a conversation with you. He's a delight to be around. The first thing he says to me, he says, Coach, where's my hat? Last time we did a game, you cost me a hat, and I have a collection. Where's my hat? Yeah. Remember, I tell you, he made me nervous. I made sure we got him one before the game. Did he know? get one? Yeah, we got him a Get hat. him off our case. Yeah. Yeah. He's almost too intense to be an offensive lineman, they say. He gets so fired up and so pumped up, sometimes he blocks beyond the defender. You know I mean? Just keep <laughs> flying. I was uh, interested in uh, Jerry Hamlin talking about, he thought it reminded him a lot of a Mike Webster who played so many years at Pittsburgh after playing collegiately at Wisconsin. Well, you know, centers can, can get by at that six foot one, and he's got great quickness and that great lower body strength and leverage. He'll be all Big Ten, vying for maybe All-American honors at that center spot. Oh, Give to Hord. Hord on a delay, and <laughs> Hord gets inside the 30. And off to Leroy Hord. And Horde dropped at the 29 of Minnesota. Talk about somebody getting dropped at the 29. Big Greg Skrepnik, number 75. The big 325-pound lineman pulls over here in interference, and I'm not sure who hit him, but I'll tell you, he got his lunch. Here he comes. He's pulling over there. Boo! He got oh. buckled right there. He's getting back up, though. He wants to get after people. You know, that reminds me of a boxer in the ring when they take a right cross. Right. That was Mike Sunfold that did a nice job, but Skrepnik just wasn't ready for that. Sunfold's played a strong game. Here is yes. Brown rolling to the near side on a second and 16. Up the field, and the ball is caught. That was Greg McMurtry coming back. McCree defending on it. McMurtry already with a touchdown catch today. What McMurtry really did then, Gary, is he worked upfield. Now, following fans, he's at the right of the screen. Now he's in the middle. He's working upfield. Now watch him push deep. Now watch him come back. Watch him keep coming back, coming back, coming back for the ball. That really makes it tough for the defensive guy to break that up. Very good execution by Greg McMurtry. Boy, you can see all of the water on the field. They go sloshing around. Still going to be four yards to go for the first down. Third down coming up. Brown throwing the ball well in this bad weather. 
over the middle, broken up. That was Colazar, the intended receiver, and Lumpkin was there. I can't say enough for number 26. He has done a great job, but if he hadn't broken that up, it might have been intercepted. <laughs> so now, if Gillette can kick a field goal, he's going to set a Michigan record for field goals in a game. He's what? already booted four. This will be his fifth attempt. It's going to be a 34-yard attempt. So this is for a Michigan record at the 525 mark of the fourth quarter. Well, he's 79% good in his career from this distance. The kick by Gillette is on the way, and we have a new Michigan record. Five field goals in a game for Gillette. He's the catcher on the Michigan baseball team, an outstanding athlete, and he's given the Wolverines a 22-7 lead. I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'd go to college. Me yeah. too. If I had the money. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? You don't want those fries. <laughs> what are you going to do, Jack? Eat your way to college? <laughs> hey, really? I'm going to college on the new GI Bill. You serve full-time in the armed forces or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The GI Bill. Are you using that pickle? For young men and women in the armed forces, it's a great place to start. See a local military recruiter. You just got a frequent flyer award, huh? That's right. You don't fly frequently. No, infrequently. How can you be a frequent flyer if you don't fly frequently? How can I hit the ball if you're talking How to me? How can you hit the ball if you're going to be talking over there? On Northwest, you don't have to fly a lot to earn a free trip fast. While other airlines have prohibited smoking on flights under two hours, Northwest is the only U.S. airline to make every flight in North America smoke-free. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Northwest, Northwest, Northwest! The number two team in the nation, USC, meets Pac-10 rival Arizona State for a Big Ten matchup as Michigan State tackles Indiana next week on ABC's College Football. Gillette has just kicked a Michigan record fifth field goal of this game. His longest has been 25 yards. You can see that inside the 40-yard line in his career, he's 82%, and that really matches up very closely with the NFL average over the last five years. An excellent kicker. That was coming in today, so he's helped that percentage. Yeah, he's raised it up. He's making some dough, isn't he? Sir, that kick goes to the back of the end zone. Well, for a crowd that was announced at 102,000, we may have, what, 7,000 people left? Oh, a few more than that, but... <laughs> there is what he has done thus far for the year. Five field goals today, 14 to 19. We mentioned he also punts, and that's really difficult. You use different muscles. Oh, it is, and it's a different swing. You know, he's a punter, you punt straight on. As a, a soccer-style kicker, you swing the leg, you know, inside out on it across the ball. Plus, you know, he may have the option. He may be a good enough baseball player to play in the majors. That's right. He caught He's a Jim good Abbott, who was an outstanding pitcher for Michigan. They were the Big Ten champions. There's a flag that Schopner up for a loss. And yes, it's Pesner. But uh, the penalty flag, see what that's all about. There's a flag on the play. Mark Messner, I was talking to him, I said, has Bo mentioned that Thompson run? Mentioning it, he said. <laughs> I said, I'm so sick of hearing about the run of last year. Yeah. I'll be so glad when we get through this game. Well, that might be about his 34th or 35th career sack. Holding offense. Penalty decline. Second down. Well, he came in here, Dick, with 33 sacks and 61 tackles for loss. Here he is. He jumps to the outside right there, and he's working all the way around, and then he comes back around into the quarterback, and I think the pattern was taken away downfield, and that was Lennon, J.J. Lennon, working on him, number 67. Or Messner working on him. I'm not sure which way. <laughs> Second down now, 15 yards to go inside the 15 of Minnesota. 22-7, the Wolverines. Schaffner, a lot of time, clearing over the middle is Gould. Gould trying to get wide, nothing doing. Good reaction there. Good call. Clip. Scholarship in each player's name to each school to further assist qualified students in the pursuit of excellence in all chosen academic fields. 
I really like this Schaffner. He's going to be a fine football player, and let's just hope that injury's not serious. And I think they'll get the offense a little better defined for him. They've really been sort of searching because you have the great back, you know. Here, here he is in the middle of your screen, and he gets hit in front right there That's by White. White, and he got hit in the back as well mm. by Messner. Who else? Scissor job. Uh, he's up and walking off, and that's good. Now, Keswick Joyner has come in to replace him. He is a redshirt freshman out of Mississippi, who they feel has the best arm on the team. Looks like it's around that back area that's bothering Schaffner. But as I started to say, I really like Schaffner. He looks to me like he can be their guy the next three years. Joyner now coming in. There he is. Not very big. He's 5'10", 174, but with that great arm, he was a Mississippi Athlete of the Year his senior year. He threw 20 touchdown passes and ran for another 12, so he knows where the end zone is. This will be his first snap of the game, and with 4.43, it's a third and 14 for the Gophers. Oh, he's in trouble, and he almost got thrown for a safety by Messner. No, no I think they hit Yeah, him they got him at the two, but I mean, it was close. I'm not sure he knew where he was because he was backpedaling so quickly, and Messner was bearing down and dropped him, and they're going to mark it at about the two. Messner right here on the left is that going to make a move. I don't know if he went inside or outside from where I'm. He's going to jump around the outside. He jumped outside John Silvestra. And if you give him the room, and if the offensive tackle gets their shoulders at right angles to the line of scrimmage, that just opens the gate for a guy with great quickness. And that's what happened. Here he comes off the field. They make a late change. It's fourth down as Herbal have to punt as deep as he can go in the end zone. Well, that's not what Joyner had in mind when he came in on his first snap. He's went over the sideline and says, Coach, can't you think of a better time to put me in? <laughs> Herbal hits it. Coldesar waits on it at the 35 and calls the fair catch. And so Michigan, after that 34-yard punt, will have the ball, and they have a 22-7 lead. Well, we talked about tomorrow all kinds of races coming your way. The New York City Marathon Live, 23,000 runners. Now, Dick, I want you to promote the next event. I know you're really into this. It's going to be the same-day coverage of the Nissan IndyCar Challenge for Miami, Florida. Well, I just read they're not only going to be running there, but a year from now they'll be running right here in the Detroit area. Running that, and the, the Andrettis have uh, signed to drive for the same crew. Can imagine having father and son Andretti's driving for you? You really follow that closely, though. You grew I, up with that kind of a background. Yeah, I do. I enjoy it. Now, I'm a big fan of Mario Andretti. There's a handoff to Bunch on a first down. Bunch carrying it inside the 35 to the 33. Dick, let's look ahead a little bit. Michigan obviously going to win this one. They're a step closer to Pasadena, but I'm telling you, they got to play Illinois here next week and then go to Ohio State. And Ohio State will load up, even though they don't figure to win that game. It's not going to be easy for them to get to Pasadena. There are no gimmies, regardless of how they say, well, the league is not as what it ought to be and all this kind of stuff. It's a young league right now. It's going to be stronger next year. The great players are young kids. And it, it'll be tough. Second and seven, Demetrius Brown is going to have to take him to the piece of Pasadena now. Pass complete to Jeff Brown, and Brown is dumped at the 11-yard line. That is his ninth catch of the year. Outstanding blocker. Doesn't catch that many, but that's a 22-yard game. You know what they're doing right now offensively? They have the ball game won. Instead of sitting on the lead, they're going ahead and under the gun, giving, I think, giving Demetrius Brown some pass work under pressure, under fire, in game situations, because he hasn't done a lot of it this year. Well, as we said, he will have to be the guy as Taylor out for the remainder of the season. Well, he throws a bullet. He really does. Watching him on the practice field the other day, he throws a dart. He just threw too many interceptions last year. New man of the lineup, Alex Jefferson, carrying the ball. He's one of those three sophomores they have at the running back spot. Jefferson and Williams and Bowles, all three are sophomores, as are all three fullbacks. This is a young Michigan football team all the way. They only had two starters on defense that were seniors. Go to Kuntz just soon. The remaining 219 get off the clock. This team down 22 to 7. They made three great goal line stands. Still, the turnovers hurt them so badly early in the game, the three in the first half. But the defense did a heck of a job. You've got to give the defense a lot of credit. Hutch and Jefferson in the backfield now. Second down eight. Jefferson. Jefferson. Able to get close to the five-yard line area. That is Anthony Bryant, 95, that made the you know, stop. 
Anthony Bryant has caught my eye this, the whole time he's been playing in there for Skeeter Ockrey. He's been doing a real good job. He's flashed into plays. Now, I, I realize he's a backup player. He's a redshirt freshman. This guy has a real future. He can move inside out on plays. They said he's very intense. 6'3", 235. A year ago, a lot of people had rated Minnesota as having one of the top 20 recruiting classes, and he would have been a member of that. Well, he's a good one. Third down now, four. They can pick up a first and goal at the two-yard line. Brown pitches to Jefferson. Jefferson inside the five to the four. Ron Getz over there to make the stop. Getz did a real good job coming inside out, and Getz was a highly recruited guy. Now, will Gillette try another field goal? <laughs> that would be six. He's already got the record. There's Getz, the guy you're talking about, a former fullback, playing linebacker. No, they're going to go. Yep, Horde will come in. You know, getting back to Getz, he's made a lot of good plays today for Minnesota. He came in to the game, the leading tackler, with 85 tackles, five tackles for a loss and three sacks. Really plays hard. Minnesota still seek that first Big Ten week win at Wisconsin next week. Then they finish off with Iowa at home. Here is a give to Horde he on a fourth down. down. I don't know if he got a first and goal or not. I don't think he made it. Stats and Stevens. Make that Stevenson on the stop. Time, 24 seconds. There's a good nucleus on the field for Minnesota to end up with a good football team some down, somewhere down the road. It is really tough to come in as a head coach and build a program and have it going that can compete with the stability of a Michigan program that's been working together for 20 years, you know? By the way, Tony Bowles, if you're wondering, unofficially ends the day with 32 carries, 184 yards. Michigan runs out of downs, and Minnesota, with 24 seconds, two timeouts left, will come out at about the two-and-a-half-yard line. So two years ago, Minnesota was able to pull off an upset. Last second field goal, beating then number one ranked Michigan. Not to happen today, as Michigan still on top of the Big Ten race, as Keswick Joyner on a keeper brings it out to the 10-yard line. But they still have to beat Illinois. They have to beat Illinois and also go to Ohio State. And, of course, that game will be here on ABC. So it's all over. Michigan remains unbeaten in Big Ten play. They're 5-0-1, 6-2-1 on the air. Minnesota now 0-4-2 in the Big Ten. And the little brown jug will stay in Ann Arbor. And the guy carrying it off had an awful lot to do with that. Mark Messner, 22-7, Michigan, over the Golden Gophers of Minnesota.